the recommendation provided by HARB for the demolition of Leahy Hall, the former YWCA building located in downtown Scranton. In attendance are the following, HARB Chairman John Moore and HARB members, Mr. Ralph Scartelli, Mr. Michael Mueller, Ms. Ella Rayburn, Rayburn Mr. Wayne Evans, Mr. William Lesniak, uh, I believe Dr. Peter Kuppel, and Mr. Lee Borthwick's work schedule is unpredictable. Oh, you are here. Okay, Mr. Borthwick is here. Thank you. We welcome you to City Council Chambers. Council members will offer questions and comments in the established order. Scranton City Council does not receive copies of the minutes of HARB meetings. Therefore, I will ask first Mr. Moore to state succinctly what transpired at the May, June, and July meetings regarding its recommendations related to the legislation for the demolition of the former YWCA building. Certainly. Yes. I'd like to say that the nine member board are all volunteers. We are all volunteers. Um, this very intelligent group gives their time and their knowledge for the betterment of the city of Scranton. That's all I have to say at the beginning. Thank you. Okay, now what was your question again? If you could please state succinctly what transpired at the May, June, and July meetings regarding HARB's recommendation related to the legislation for the demolition of the former YWCA building. Okay, on um, May 13th, the HARB met. Uh, we are nine member board. Eight of the nine members were there and present. Uh, we deliberated and took a four to three vote for demolition of Leahy Hall with Richard Leonori, who is here tonight, uh, abstaining because he is part of the, the uh, group uh, that, it, that is invested in, into the, um, the um, architect. Um, I don't know what else you want me to say. We, we, we debated it. We went back and forth. We were there three hours. And we took a final vote, and the final vote was four to three for demolition of Leahy Hall. And at the June meeting? Uh, the June meeting, uh, many times if we have, don't have anything to review regarding another building uh, in the city, uh, there's no sense bringing everyone to, to, to the meeting. I'll cancel the meeting. And we had nothing to review in June. I canceled the June meeting. Uh, I contacted personally every hard member, all nine of them. Uh, there was a note posted on the door uh, for the uh, Sunshine Law. We don't have a budget. That's part of our problem. We have no money. And uh, we can't advertise in the paper. We only advertise once a year, and somewhere within City Hall, they have to pick up the tab for that. But uh, we put a notice on the, on, the, on the door that we had canceled the meeting, and there was no meeting. And the July meeting? And the July meeting, we did meet. And again, we had eight out of nine members at the July meeting, we looked at uh, the Albright Memorial Library, the work being done there, we reviewed that, and I believe you'll be getting that soon. And uh, we, we did not go back to Leahy Hall. Uh, we didn't review it again. And uh, that was our June Okay, meeting. thank you. Um, Mr. Moore, does HARB have written bylaws by which its meetings are conducted? No. Then what is the procedure for calling a meeting of the HARP? For example, if a majority of council members call for a special meeting, then a meeting will be conducted. Or if the president of city council calls for a special mm -hmm. meeting, then a meeting will be held. What mm -hmm. is your procedure? Uh, we, we just call all the members. If it's a special meeting, we've done that occasionally, where we had to review something and there wasn't enough time uh, and we would have to advertise uh, again in the newspaper and someone at City Hall would pick up the tab for that and we would have a special meeting. But uh, either they, the, the hard members would be emailed 
or phoned, one or the other. That we and it, when when we have our meeting, we only meet once a month. So at the end of the meeting, we meet in the second Monday of every month, and that's at the end of the meeting we say our next meeting will be whatever it is, whatever the second Monday of the next month is. Make a note of it, and then uh, our secretary would email them a few days before the meeting to remind them of the meeting. Um. Well, as you stated, you have no bylaws, so it would seem that um, there is no procedure in writing regarding special circumstances which would call for a meeting. Um, and I would say if you have no bylaws. Most, may I say this? Most HARBs don't. They don't have bylaws. Well, if, again, you have no bylaws, it would seem that the membership would be able to call for a meeting equally as a chairperson would be able to call for a meeting since there are no rules or regulations guiding this board in writing. Is that correct? Um, I don't see how. Only you have the authority. Or, or uh, uh, Richard is, 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 uh, is the second chair. If I cannot attend the meeting, Richard would chair for me. Certainly, I understand that, just as Mr. Joyce would chair for me in my absence. Correct. But I'm saying, who calls for a special meeting? Just the chairman? Certainly. Uh, was a hard meeting conducted, to your knowledge, in June 2013 by several board me members? The meeting for June, as far as I'm concerned, was canceled, and it was posted. I have no idea who met. Uh, did you respond to emails sent by HARB members requesting a June meeting? I didn't get any. Well, it was my understanding that because you failed to respond, and I think perhaps Ms. Reed failed to respond, some of the membership held a June meeting. Now, I think you already made it clear that all nine members of the HARD were not present when this recommendation was voted upon, correct? You what, said what, eight. What recommendation? The one that we're discussing this evening. Okay. There were eight of the nine yes. people there, yes. And uh, what members were in attendance that night? I will make it easy. I'll, I'll accept myself. Okay. I'll accept yeah. for Mr. Evans. Correct. Okay. Can you tell us uh, the meeting attendance record of each of the members, let's say, over the last two years? How do you mean? Pardon? I says, how do you mean? I, have they been at every meeting? Is that what you're saying? The record of attendance for each of the members in the last two years. Do you have that information? Uh, no, I don't. There is no secretary who keeps any record of who attends the meetings? Sure, uh, Ms. Reed does. Okay, then would you direct Ms. Reed to send City Council the attendance records for 2012 and 2013 of each member? Sure, she does have that. On or before July 23rd, please. And just to establish clarity, did a second vote for reconsideration of the HARB recommendation ever occur? Not to my knowledge. Uh, Mr. Moore, you've stated publicly that HARB will not be voting again. I'll quote you, I will not revisit it, the vote is done. Correct. Now, like HARB, City Council voted on the legislation, and it was defeated. As president, I could have done as you have done and refused to place the legislation on Council's agenda for reconsideration. However, I chose to acknowledge the wishes of my colleagues, particularly since two members were absent from the original vote. Why, then, will you not allow a vote for reconsideration? Because 
we had all of the parties there. The university people were there. The architects were there. Uh, we questions went back and forth. Uh, we uh, talked about saving part of the building, saving artifacts from the YWCA. Um, it, it, it seems that with eight people there, and it passed, do we have to keep on voting until we, until we get to the point where maybe you or someone on this board wants to happen? I mean, we voted. It's a done deal. It's finished. Only one member did not. Only now, if we, we were two to, if you we were like you, where you voted two to one, that would have been fine. But we didn't. We had eight people there. Now I understand one had us abstain for a reason, but I'm not. I, I'm not going to revisit it. I mean, we could do that forever. We could be voting from now until 2020 until we get the results that you want. Well, actually, we have. Um we follow Robert's rules of order, and we have council rules as okay. well. So there are rules that dictate these meetings. And uh, I would assume from what you're saying then that I was wrong to allow council's reconsideration. I didn't say that. Because according to our rules, a majority vote of those present, when a quorum is present, rules. And that happened. Well, we have none. You, you, I've stated that, and you've stated that. Well, what I'm saying is I was open and fair enough to reconsider this based on my colleagues' wishes. If your colleagues wish to reconsider, why would you not allow that? Then, then, then would we have to reconsider every vote we ever take? I mean, this could go on forever. I mean, it could be another demolition. It could be an awning. It could be uh, repointing a brick. It could be painting. And some of the members don't agree. And you vote four to three and it passes. Do I have to go backwards and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. They didn't like it. We have to vote on it again. We'd be there forever. Well, in addition, Mr. Moore, you stated publicly that HARB has sent 39 items to council to review during the past 12 years. And council passed every one of them with flying colors. That's correct. They never questioned one of them. No, that was incorrect. Uh, you did. There were several times you had questions uh, about the colors, about something, uh, you, you, but that part of it wasn't correct. I did not say that. But I said you did pass everything we've ever sent you. Uh, th there's been no question. I mean, it, it, uh, uh, we've had a good relationship with you people. Uh, if, and I think everything is always presented correctly to you. Our, our, our uh, secretary does a good job. And, um, it was all passed, though. That's the truth. You, you, never, you never did not pass anything we sent to you, that I, to my knowledge. However, in those same years, uh, well, I would say I can only speak to the last nine and a half years. So I do agree with your, your observation. But, however, in those same years, I was never contacted by HARB members citing serious concerns over a proposed recommendation or a questionable vote that occurred. Mm -hmm. This is the first and only time I was contacted, and in fact, contacted multiple times by HARB members, as was council's office and other council members. That's the difference in this situation. They did not come to me, though. They went directly to you after the vote. They never once sent anything to me at all that I can see, to my knowledge. I don't do computers. That's my problem. You want me, you give me a telephone call, okay? They right. send it to you and, and, and not to me. They should have questioned me first before they sent anything to you or any of your board members. Uh, to that point, um, all of our correspondence from Secretary Tori Reed is done by email. Yes. And I have, in fact, a folder full of oh, emails sure. that I've received and our office has received from HARB members regarding this legislation. And that... Is that every HARB member? You, in fact... No, it's not every HARB member. But it appears that you, in fact, and Ms. Reed were contacted about this, but you did not respond. Um, And I would say, in response to your early, earlier comments about <clears throat> I'm just looking for 
a result that I'd like to see. I'd like to say to you, if a vote for reconsideration were taken, isn't it possible that it could result in a tie which would kill Harb's recommendation? Four in favor, four against, since Harb member Mr. Leonori, who works for the architect hired by the university, uh -huh. which you mentioned yourself, would have to abstain. Is that why you as chairman will not allow another vote? No way. No way. That's absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. Well, thank you. I'd now like to hear from uh, maybe Mr. Evans or Mr. Muller. Can you tell us what transpired regarding this legislation during the May, June, and July HARB meetings and what attempts were made to call for a vote of reconsideration? Could we move the microphone down, please? Uh, in May, um, we reviewed the application submitted by the university. And to be fair, this is the first time HARB has ever received a demolition application. Um, and I think collectively, we felt that the submission was light in information. And um, what John Moore uh, did not express was that there was a vote taken to table that meeting. Uh, and that vote was uh, passed five to three at, in May. And uh, Chairman Moore disagreed with that vote and asked to rescind that. That's not true. Can I say that? Well, I would prefer that you okay. remain okay. silent, please. Okay. You have had your opportunity to speak, and now I would like okay. to hear from, because no one had interrupted okay. when you spoke. Uh, that happened very, very early in the meeting. Uh, as we proceeded to discuss the project uh, after the re rescinding of the legislation or the the vote to table. Um, we went on and on for hours discussing the project uh, until it seems Mr. Moore got the vote he was seeking, which was in favor of demolition. Uh, and I questioned why a historic architectural review board would approve the demolition of one of the few landmark buildings on our list. On which list? Uh, Harb, Harb's role is to manage and maintain and be a steward to a list um, of landmark buildings throughout the city, uh, this YMCA building being one. I see. You want to talk about July or June? Was a uh, June, or a, do you want to the June add meeting? anything? Well, I, uh, what we sensed was that there was actually a request that came from council to, to explain the term courtesy review that was the final motion in the May meeting. And that was a request that, yes. that we heard obviously in the paper it was you know well known to all of the members so we requested some of the members requested a meeting sent emails to the secretary to have a meeting uh, for some reason there was a, a blackout of information for three or four days and it never happened so five members of HARB showed up that Monday for a meeting a majority of HARB showed up there was no note on the door saying the meeting was canceled. And we proceeded to have a meeting to discuss the courtesy review language of the original motion. At that time, we determined that the proper language would be, uh, what were we gonna put? Satisfactory. Satisfactory review in lieu of the courtesy review. At that point, we sent that information to uh, the law department who failed to act on that because uh, the chair didn't recognize the meeting. Now, this goes back to the fact that we don't have bylaws. I will say in the July meeting that we did have, we established a bylaw committee, mm -hmm. a long overdue bylaw committee, which we will be hopefully uh, dealing with in, in our August meeting. With Robert's Rules of Order. With Robert's Rules of Order, of course. Okay. I think what the majority of HARB is interested in is a review of the mitigation elements presented by the university um, prior to approving a certificate of appropriateness for demolition. 
we have no idea what they plan on saving, where it will go, how it will be incorporated. And I think that's all we're asking is an opportunity to review those before approving or disapproving demolition. I see. Um, can you tell me then, was a second vote, because this has been discussed by council members during our regularly scheduled meetings, and there's much confusion about this. Some say yes, some say no. Was a second vote, a vote for reconsideration, ever taken? No, it was not. No. And uh, Mr. Evans, if you had been present for the May meeting, how would you have voted on this? The question would be um, yes for demolition and no for dem for, for yes to support demolition and no to not support demolition. Is that the question? I want to make sure that the right answer is yes. yes. So the no means I would not have supported the demolition. Well, the recommendation that was presented, I that's included in okay. our legislation. My vote would have been no. And if a vote for reconsideration were taken, how would you vote? Yes. Mr. McGough, uh, you called for this public caucus. Do you have any questions or comments? Uh, well, first, uh, clarification. When the certificate of appropriateness is put back on the agenda, uh, our agenda, it was done so by a vote, uh, a majority vote of council, according to the rules of council and the administrative code. If, if the majority of council votes, it must go back to the agenda. It, it, it's not at the discretion of the president. Well, actually, that isn't completely true. There's, no. there's one set of rules that, yes, I agree with that. There's another set of rules that, no, the president has that choice. However, I made the choice. It was presented to Understood. me, and I made the choice for reconsideration. Um, and, and this can be, I, I'm, I'll ask it of the entire um, our board, um, have, have you ever taken votes without all nine members present? Yes. yes. Could, if we have five members, we'll take the vote. Is it you are do you normally have all nine members present when you take votes? Right. So that so that having only eight members at this meeting where this was voted upon was not an unusual situation. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Um have you ever met to rescind a prior vote? So that if, if you were to meet to vote on this again, that would be an unusual occurrence. Absolutely. This is the first well, demolition we've ever had. Okay. And, and the other side of it is that if, if council, again, we're recommending body to council. So therefore, if council throws it back to us as a recommendation to do some other action, I think we should pay attention to that. Can I say I got nothing, uh, I got nothing from council stating clarify the courtesy of you personally. Well, Mrs. Uh, Craig, okay. you know, while getting the, he said, she said, Ms. I, in fact, I went over, I read Mrs. Craig's email again today that had copied Mr. Moore, but again, okay, so, discussed the email. So what you're basically saying, it, it was an unusual vote to begin with since right. it was the first time. Yeah. So that a vote to rescind that would be just as unusual, I guess would be. Uh, yeah, and I think the reason for that is I think there's such strong feelings about approving demolition. That is the ultimate uh, request for an historic landmark building. And, okay. and, and some members of HARP do not view their role as doing that. Um, but we all agree that <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, since you don't have any bylaws, 
when this was taken, I, I understand that you have now created a committee that you will have set of, or hopefully have a set of bylaws. Um, could Mr. Leonori vote if he wished? Since there are no bylaws, is there anything that would prevent him from voting on this proposal? Justice Conscience. Yeah. I'm sorry? Probably would not allow it. Well, I, I guess I'm just saying that we're, 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 we asked Mr. Evans if, you know, another vote were taken, how we would vote. So I, I guess what I'm saying is if you were to, in fact, go back and revisit this, is there anything to prevent Mr. Leonori from actually voting? Yes, I think there is. The professional certification would be arrested. Oh, I, okay. So it's nothing from HARB that would prevent it. It would be a conflict with. Understood. Thank you. Uh, well, that's <laughs> <laughs> Do you? And I'll ask all, everyone on the board, do you consider the initial vote to be a, I'll say, legally constituted, constituted vote of HARP? Is there anyone that feels that it was not done according to the precedents established by HARP in the past? I think the initial motion to table that was passed successfully superseded any vote taken after that because the majority of hard members at that meeting voted to table that application and after three hours of badgering <laughs> um, they squeaked the vote out um, I believe that's all I have. I'm sorry I take, take offense to that because I think it's directed at me. I'm sorry, I can't. I think that that was like, directed at me that I was badgering them to change their vote. Uh, it was more of a discussion than bad discussion. It was a, discussion. Discussion. Yeah, it was, it was a professional meeting. Uh, there was nobody here with a baseball bat. That came very close to adjourning the meeting after they voted to table it because it went so long that no one could make up their mind until the university said they would. Save the portable on the outside of the building and either put it in a guard or incorporate it in a new building. And they were going like that. And they were going to take artifacts from the YWCA and, and put it, a display inside of the new building and show the history of the Y and how it became and what it was. And they were happy with that. And once that happened, that was the courtesy review. When, when they got to that point that they were going to demolish it, the university would come back to us for a courtesy review and tell us exactly what they were going to do to the portal, exactly what they were going to do to the artifacts in the YWCA. And that's when we ended up saying, John, yeah. John, yeah. 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 to the wrong way, I think uh, Rich Leonardo explained to them for about maybe half an hour of what they were going to do. I wouldn't call that badgering. Is that true, Rich? I explained the nature of the building, what the steps were that we went through. And I don't want to make every effort to uh, honor the memory and keep the best parts of the existing building incorporated into the new design. Uh, one last question, and um, maybe it's an unfair question, but um, I get the impression, and I, I've spoken to Mr. Evans in the past, uh, uh, over a couple of times in the past couple of weeks. Um, would it be safe to say that at this point in time, um, HARB itself, the board, that the board is having difficulties among themselves at reaching a, a decision as to what is appropriate and what is not? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I could badger somebody into changing their vote, that's, you know, that's not a good thing. I think that uh, what's, what's happened is the harp is basically split between people that are a little more inclined to be preservationist 
and people that are more inclined to be progressive. I, I personally think that preservation and progress are not mutually exclusive, but, uh, and they can happen together simultaneously, but I think that's the divide right now among the HARP, because this is such an important issue. This ordinance is not our ordinance, it's the city of Scranton's ordinance. These buildings are not our buildings, they're the city's buildings. They were put on here by elected officials with input from the HARP. And to ask the HARP... Oh, this was an input from the HARP, from the Architectural Heritage Association. It's an ordinance that was passed by the city of Scranton through, through a city council passes ordinance, therefore it's your ordinance, the city of Scranton's ordinance. The bottom line is that, um, you know, we are, should not be in the business of, um, we should be protecting our historic landmark buildings, not sending them to the landfill. That's how I view our role. And this was a very, very important issue. We can't pick winners and losers. What's going to happen the next time somebody wants to tear down a building and put a parking lot there? Is that, that's not okay for everybody because it's only a parking lot? It's about the building, not about the future project. I understand that Jobs and the University is a wonderful organization and facility, but this is about our history and our, about our heritage on a going forward basis. And I will say, Mrs. Evans, I mean, she's getting a lot of heat for this, but she has always been on the side of preservation since I've been involved with the HARB and the Architectural Heritage Association. So what's fair is fair. Uh, and I think that needs to be said in public from our perspective. I also think at, at risk is the integrity of the Historic Architectural Review Board. Considering this is our first demolition application, I think by setting the precedent, allowing this building to come down without any process other than a three-hour meeting and a photograph of the existing building, uh, I think that sets a horrible precedent for the other 47 buildings on the list. Uh, because I think any other applicant can come in and say, this building no longer suits my needs, and therefore it can come down. I think we should set the bar a little higher uh, for future applicants to demonstrate the worthiness of a historic landmark building being demolished. Uh, and we do have a process in place in our ordinance that would allow an applicant to request a special meeting with HARB to remove a building from the list if they feel it should not be listed as landmark status. Uh, which is another alternative rather than requesting us approving demolition if they make the case that for whatever reason a building does not stand up to that of landmark status uh, that would call a vote before us and we could either approve or deny that could I, uh, can I ask you I, I just thought of something else that had come up um, when when was Leahy Hall or the YWCA placed on the the list that you have 1996 i'm sorry 1996 at whose request well it it, it came through the administration so who was the mayor at the time 96 um i'm looking for the signatures and it let me while you're looking at, yeah. and it was owned by the university of scranton at the time yes Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Malkin? Yes, a few questions. And I apologize for being a few minutes late. I got stuck in traffic. Um, the first question, I believe, was probably answered already, but I'm, I wasn't here. Um, the question is, when does HARB meet and how often? Is it, is it monthly? It's monthly, second month, second month, Okay. Um, Mr. Evans mentioned that these properties are put on the board by elected officials. Um, is it just by the administrative branch, or, or was there a vote of council? Well, again, there was input from the Architect Heritage Association at the time, the HARB, and the administration would draft the legislation for council's approval. It was a council vote. It was a council vote. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Accepted this ordinance and the list Right. Because part of and, and I think a lot, obviously there are divisions within the heart, just like there are divisions on council and, and any other body that, that's mm -hmm. taking votes on issues. Um, and they could just see just by looking who's on what side without <laughs> you guys even talking, it's pretty easy to tell. But I think with city council and the mayor having placed it on this list, 
I think it's certainly appropriate that City Council and the mayor have say in whether the building is demolished or, or whether it's not. Um, so another question, and this was brought to me from a resident. Um, how was the, whole, the process of the Hotel Casey being demolished? Now, I, I understand that that was prior to the harp. Prior to the harp? Yeah. In fact, okay. the, the ordinance grew out of some of those situations like the Hotel Casey and, and the mall demolition. That's how all this came about through uh, litigation and mitigation is how the harp was formed because of those demolitions. Yeah. But again, don't forget, too, the Hotel Casey was a distressed building, so you can make a case for that. Yeah. Leahy Hall is not a distressed building. It's a viable and active building. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the questions a lot of people over the last, you know, few few weeks have brought up to me. You know, Hotel Casey's was an iconic building in the city of Scranton, um, and many would say much more so than the YWCA or Leahy Hall. But I'm glad that you cleared that up. Um, to me, it's obvious that there's, you know, there's divisions in the harb and, you know, allegations of badgering and, or whether it's debate or badgering. It was a long meeting. It was, you know, a divisive vote. I don't think any of that is really relevant to the vote that council is taking. I think it's it's council's decision whether we support this project or oppose this project, and based on whether it be you know historical reasons or based it being on other reasons, we each have our vote. And I'm hopeful that the right thing will take place tonight. In this scenario, I do believe um, that council should approve this. Um, I, I respectfully disagree with, with some of the dissent. And Mr. Evans, I know we spoke, and then I, I followed up with the university as well. I know there were talks of possibly a compromise where the buildings would be integrated, but from speaking to folks at the university and um, some of their engineer, um, engineers, that wouldn't be possible for what they're trying to do. Um, I just personally think that the long-term benefit of the job creation and of the money being brought into the city in, in this case outweighs um, any other objections that have been raised. Um, so I'm hopeful that this legislation will pass without any amendment and um, the project will move forward. But I do thank everyone for coming in. Um, it's, it was a good discussion and I'm very glad to hear that HARB will be operating with bylaws under Robert's rules in the future. <laughs> I think that's certainly a good step on towards avoiding this, this scenario in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscombe, do you have any questions? Yes, just a few. First of all, I would like to thank you all for, for coming here this evening. I know some of you, uh, Mr. Lenore, we go back, way back. His dad was my first boss and taught me well. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, you do. And you got some of your mom in you, too. But. Um, you know, I recognize the magnitude and the scope of this vote and this legislation. You know, I, I've looked at both, both ends of it through this whole process. I've listened to both sides. Um, you know, as, as Mrs. Evans stated, it could, it, it could have rolled on our last vote and this would have been a done deal at this point. I felt it was important enough when some of my fellow councilmen said they didn't have an opportunity to vote. I felt it was important enough to let everybody have their vote. And being an opponent or proponent, I don't know which way it's going to go at this point, but I did give everybody the opportunity to vote on this because it is important. And I could understand the progressiveness that we need in the city, but I also can understand that we have a historic board for the preservation of our history in the city. So, you know, we're sitting here looking at it in a couple different ways. Either way we make our decision, there's going to be dissatisfied people on either side. We're either going to lose a piece of our history, we're going to have a brand new building or vice versa. If we don't have a brand new building, we're going to have people complaining that there are no jobs and, and, and the whole scenario. There's no win in this situation at all. And, and as Mr. Moore stated in, in the newspaper that uh, I believe it was 39 different occasions in the past 12 years, uh, 
HARB has made presentations to this board for our vote. And being here only less than four years, I am aware of many of them, uh, the majority of them being signage or awnings or stuff like that. Uh, nothing of this magnitude. So I can understand the passions at this point over this situation. Um, and, and a good example is legislation we have on tonight from HARB for the Albright Memorial Library. This is how it should work. This, this is the whole thing. Um, you know, it, it, it's tough. Again, no matter which way this board goes, there's those that are wrong, those that are right. I believe that the uh, historic panel is there to protect our history and uh, should do everything in their power to see that that is maintained or done. I think a few artifacts here and there, personally to me, that doesn't, doesn't do it. We had Mr. Himmler last week read off a list of the buildings that were historic buildings that they were able to renovate and, and, and keep, you know, a portion of the building at least or renovate the existing. We've got perfect examples of that in our own city here numerous times. I think a good architect, given the right amount of, maybe it's the dollar amount, uh, can, make, can make gold out of any building, believe me. You can take an outhouse and, and make it shine. Be so, you know, I don't, I don't fall for that uh, argument that it can't be, they can't incorporate the corner building into the architecture of the whole building. Anything is adaptable today, but it's the bottom dollar. And, you know, how this all came about, it seems like there was a, a rush. Uh, just listening tonight, it sounds like the meeting was at the same, if I'm correct, at the same meeting that this was tabled, it was the same meeting that it was also voted on? Is it, am I correct after a few hours? Yes. yes. Okay. There was a vote taken to untable it, is what transpired after all the conversations we had. There was a vote taken to take it off the table? Yes, there was. Yes, there was. Okay. And we still discussed that we took it off the table. In 1996, this was put on the list, I believe the university that owned the property at that time. So have they been aware all of this time that they were, that building was a historic building? Had they received anything or were they aware of it or? Well, I was, I was also in the Architecture Care Association. I was the president of, 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 that, of the association at the time. And to my knowledge, none of these people that are on the list, these buildings that are on the list, the owners were never known about. They did pass, they did pass in council, but the owners, to my knowledge, were never known about that they were on the list. That that may fall. There was a gentleman, Mr. Ferraro, uh, that owned the uh, uh, Hotel Journey. And he found out he was on his list and was furious. No one ever told him that I can't do what I want in my building. And uh, that transpired back then when I was on board. So well, that, I could understand that too, and that, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Yeah. How did the university know to come to you to get this approval if they weren't aware of it? They went for a permit. We, the list of the buildings are in the permit office. And when a permit is taken out to do any, only facades, we don't do interiors, any facades, a flight is up and they have to go through a process. Okay. And this, this is part of is it, is the work. You know, now just seeing that uh, little chink there, is it incumbent upon this board to send every owner of a historic building at least a certification or letter at this point to notify them? and to notify them that there is a process that they could be removed from the list also? It was my understanding, Mr. Laskin, that when this ordinance was, uh, was, voted, was passed with the list on it, I understand I was on uh, the architectural board that helped to get this legis legislation through. It was my understanding that they were all supposed to be sent letters telling them that they were now in, in, on a historic list. Well, again, that's the city, city responsibility and something like that, but also, when this ordinance was voted on, it was a public hearing. And they should have been notified that there was a public hearing, that they were on a list for that purpose. So if they were never notified, again, that's back in 1996. But according to the ordinance, they were notified. I think, too, that the original design, as Mr. Leonore described it at our May meeting, uh, did retain the corner building. And that design was uh, not approved by the university. So I think there was an effort to at least 
design around it, and for whatever reason, it wasn't approved. And I, I, I mean, that, I, I think, would have uh, alleviated a lot of problems, maintain our history, uh, continue the progress of the university, and, uh, you know, I don't think we'd be here at this point. Um, it just seems, uh, in that meeting that you voted, that you all had the vote on, was that the first you really had an explanation or a layout of what was going on? Down? No. Well, that was that was just a conversation. Just a conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know where we were. Uh, I forget what what we're at. There. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Thanks, Nance. We're, we're at February's. Yeah, we were at February's meeting. That's correct. We were at February's meeting, and at that time, Mr. Leonori had informed us that the university uh, either was considering, I think at the time considering, there was nothing written in stone, I use that term, uh, at that time, but the building wasn't feasible for what they were, what they were planning. Uh, and and, and they, were, they had accreditations, they wanted to get moving on it. Uh, we probably would see something in the coming months. And this wasn't anything we voted on. This was just a general discussion we had. So all the board members were aware at that time that this building may be demolished. And? And then people met with Mr. Davis, but I don't know who. Yeah, and then some of, some of the Architectural Heritage Association members met with uh, Jim Devers uh, uh, regarding this. Uh, the HARB wasn't involved in that. They did it themselves to take a general look at the plans and what was going to be done, when it was going to be done, the scheduling of it, and uh, we weren't aware of that until later. The HARB wasn't. Okay. So, so basically back in February you were aware of this, and then here we are in July, and, and the pressure's on. Um, as, I, as I stated last week, our backs are against the wall because we're holding up a workforce of labor in the city here. Um, we're holding up progress, but at the same time, we're destroying history too. So I'll tell you, I'm torn. Well, well the, the ideal situation would have been to maintain, like I said, a portion of that building. and, and I have a little bit of a background in architecture, so I'm not speaking off the top of my head. As I stated before, anything is feasible. I think it's the bottom line is the dollar amount. Um, our craftsmen in this city can work with anything, and uh, we've seen it. We've seen the many buildings in this downtown that have been refurbished, redone, um, portions in, in fact, the Scranton Lace Company is another example where they're, they're tearing part of it down, but they're maintaining portions of it for the historic value. Um, so, I mean, the fact that it, it, it has to be totally torn down doesn't sit right with me. That's, I just can't go along with that, personally. And just, uh, you know, I'm still, again, I'm still torn. I, you know. I see pros and cons on all sides. I have many friends on both sides of this issue. And, and there's nothing in my heart I want more than this city to move ahead and progress. But I like to see it done the way it should be done. We have boards and panels that are put in place to do a certain job. We have other issues, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, you are the caretakers of our history in this city. And, and that's, a, that's a big factor. And, and to not push a little harder to maintain some of that history, I, and again, listen to me speak here, I'm probably siding with the preservationist side more at this point. Um, and I just, just one final question, as Mr. Lenori, uh, basically, I mean professionally, but I know he would have, knowing him personally, he would have bowed out if, 
from a vote if, if he was involved anyway. Has any other member of this panel, member of this board, uh, done any work or, you know, has been employed as a worker, subcontractor, I don't know your professions, by the University of Scranton in any, in any position whatsoever? So you've never worked for them as a contractor, subcontractor? I don't understand. I asked if you, if you did any work for them other than bidding. Have you been employed to do any of the contracts as a subcontractor? Business or personal? So, I, I mean, personally, to me, that's a conflict. I don't know. You have to, you could possibly gain well, down the road. That's Michael's friend. That's Michael's friend. That's, that's what I'm asking. Yes. was asked to bid on this. He was involved in the very beginning. I don't know how, but I know you were. No, we were not doing work for the university. What we asked that it be no we have to sorry, sorry. I would not for architecture. And we are we have never done work for the university and that that could be upsetting too. You know, it could be upsetting when you're not asked to, to do work for the University of Scranton. Oh, sure. sure. The University of Scranton, when they select an architect, it's, 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 they can select anybody they want. So, I mean, you can go on and on and on with conflicts. My, my point was just to see if there's any additional conflict. If, if anyone here has gained financially through the university that would conflict with their votes, that, that, that's my question. Has anybody not gained financially that's mad at the University of Scranton? That's, that's my question. Well, that's not the question I asked, so. Um, at this point, I believe that's all I have. And uh, again, no matter which way this vote goes, I hope we could all come together and uh, do what's in the best interest of this city. I thank you all again for your time and your presence here and your commitment to this, this board. Thank you. Mr. Joyce, do you have any questions? Yes, I'll try to keep it as brief as I could. Um, <clears throat> just to begin, I, I understand what happened on May 13th. I understand that the meeting in June was canceled, but there was some meeting that was held. But it's July 18th. Everyone's seen what's transpired through council, through the zoning board, through the newspaper. Everybody has their own opinions about this. From your perspective, sitting on, on HARP, the Historical Architectural Review Board, how would you vote for demolition today? And why? If each member I think we should keep our historic buildings and our history in Scranton. I don't think we should destroy them. I think it should be incorporated into a new building. Okay. I agree with that. I agree. I mean, it, my position is the hardest purpose is to protect our historic districts and our landmark buildings. So I okay. Would, I would, I would vote for demo. Uh, the building itself, we all agreed, 
we wondered why it was on the list to begin with. Um, the building isn't significant. There are no gargoyles. There's nothing there but a lot of bricks, okay? Um, and we all agreed that probably the reason it was put on because it's an old building, 1908, and it had a history of the YWCA. And, and, and we as a board, in part of talking that three-hour session, talked that. We talked that that's probably why it was on. No one really knew why it was on, whether it should or shouldn't be. Uh, I think uh, if, if, if a HARB does call for demolition of a building, and w whatever they demo, what's going to go there is going to be significant for the city, for the people. What's going to go up there will be much more significant it, for bringing monies into the coffers, uh, for jobs. Uh, I think the HARB has, has the, should vote in that direction. And a HARB manual will also tell you that. Uh, if, 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 it's, if it's going to be, uh, Michelle Lefebvre, uh, uh, who is with, was with the state, wrote a HARB manual, and in it, it said that if it will be really significant, this building that's going to replace it for the downtown, will help the d downtown, uh, yes, you could vote for demolition. And that's why I did. Okay. I would vote for demolition. I wish we didn't have to, but I don't see, uh, in order to move the city of Scranton forward, any other choice. It's a sweet brick building. It's an unassuming brick building built in 1907. that it has an addition cobbled onto what I would call the south side, so that it doesn't meet exactly. Even the YWCA moved out of the building and into south side. They outgrew the building. It became useless to them, so they moved out. Um, I think part of preservation is also to be able to move an institution, i.e. the city, forward and new buildings, new economics, new ideas move a city forward. It's not to say that the past, I'm a historian by profession and museum curator, it's not to say the past cannot be honored at all. We must do that always. We can do that by mitigation, as John mentioned. And I know Richard and I have spoken many times about mitigation, which is a federal standard, by the way. I worked at Steamtown. I was the 106 compliance officer for the park, which is a federal compliance issue. And by mitigation, you don't keep the building, but you honor its essence, you honor its history, you honor its past, whether you bring in the portico and make it into a contemplative garden, perhaps, since this will be an exercise science place, exercise science building. Uh, inside a little uh, area where, large area perhaps even, where the history of the building and the history of the YWCA in the city of Scranton can be talked about and reflected upon. So that's why I would say yes to demolition. I hate to say it, I don't like losing buildings, but I want the city to go forward and I'll say I'm not from here as they say, but I like the town and I want it to continue. Thank you. Uh, so I would agree with Ella that um, it's a shame that we have to vote on this. I, I would have preferred to see that this building maybe located in another location, but that didn't happen and it doesn't work for the way the university wants this program to work. So that being said, we need to vote on this. And I had made the original motion that had ended up on, on your desk. Um, and as originally stated, it was supposed to be a conditional approval, but I was informed that that wasn't going to work with what what we needed to recommend to you. So we had changed it to a courtesy review and agreed to that, voted on it, and moved forward. Uh, the courtesy review ended up being maybe confusing or um, gray, and we were asked to maybe take another look at that. So uh, we had changed the word courtesy to satisfactory. Um, I, I would still stand by my vote to move forward and demo, demo this building, but um, I, I think that the HARB needs to be involved and have a final say in, in the appropriateness of the mitigation. Probably doesn't have anything to say. I think uh, we have an, Ralph? we should hear from Mr. Scartelli.
Turn the mic on, please. Hear me. <laughs> um, they were, somebody mentioned before, uh, will this set a precedent uh, for any more demolition jobs? Well, I think every, everything that comes to the HARB every month is a different situation. And it would, be, it would be voted on in a different manner. I think if somebody came in here and said, well, let's rip the, the um, I think it's, is it the Catlin building, which the name of it? I think if somebody came in and said to rip down the Catlin building, which is on the University of Scranton grounds, it would be more argumental because it has a lot more aesthetic value to it. This building, and again, I, I, don't, I don't have, I'm not an engineer and I'm not an architect. I don't have a degree or a stamp. But uh, if you, and I don't know how many people here can actually say what, is what use is this building good for uh, if they went through it and uh, just by me driving by it it just seems like you know from our experience being in the construction business for the last 30 some years uh, I would just say there's, there's there's not a good use for the building and that's why I would agree to have it torn down thank you Has the university agreed to maintain some of the artifacts in the building or some of the artifacts of the building? I would just like to know that. Has that discussion been brought up? Okay. wanted something from the building, a portico, artifacts, whatever, whatever they could incorporate into the new building. And uh, that was discussed quite, quite a bit uh, back and forth and until we got to the point where uh, we were satisfied. Uh, I guess most of the heart was satisfied. Uh, but uh, that's when we decided to, uh, to take the boat. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Um, I just want to read one quick uh, bit of information and then ask each of you a question. John Laurie, it has been brought to my attention that HARB's advertised and regularly scheduled June 10th meeting has been canceled due to no agenda items. At our last meeting, we agreed to two agenda items for our June 10th meeting. This includes discussing the adoption of bylaws for HARB and also revising the demolition permit application for future landmark structures to be more extensive. Additionally, City Council is also requesting that we meet to amend language contained within the legislation pertaining to Leahy Hall's demolition. Given these three agenda items and the time sensitive nature of this project, I'm confident that the majority of HARB would be interested in meeting to discuss these items and City Council is requesting we do so on June 10th. I'm available to meet on Monday. Please advise. Now, I'd like to very quickly, you can just give me a yes or no answer because I can see who is copied on this email. Were you copied on this email? Did you receive it? We'll just go from Dr. Couple to Mr. Scartelli, et cetera. Okay, you can't read. Um, 
can also see from um, a number of emails too that uh, it's stated that Ms. Reed never responded to any of our emails and <clears throat> I think as a result in addition to what's been discussed um, no further type of uh, recommendation arrived from HARB because those in charge of HARB uh, basically didn't make the arrangements with the administration to do so which I feel is uh, very questionable, very unfortunate. Uh, I think this has been an, a tremendously enlightening meeting this evening. I thank you all for your participation. I wish you the best of success in the future. I do fear, however, that a statement that was made by one of you much earlier tonight will be our future and that is that this will set a precedent and no building <coughs> will be protected in the future um, there's no further comments again i thank you this this public caucus is adjourned thank you Are we ready? I'm ready. I'd like to call this public hearing to order. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Notice is hereby given that Scranton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, July 18th, 2013 at 5.45 p.m. in Council Chambers, second floor municipal building, 340 North Washington Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. The purpose of said public hearing is to hear testimony and discuss the following. File of Council number 41 of 2013, 
approving the transfer of a restaurant liquor license currently owned by Great Uncle Peter's LLC, 1582 Newton Ransom Boulevard, Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, 18411 in Newton Township, license number R-2782 to Tara Prada, LLC for use at 222 Wyoming Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. I see that no one has signed in for, uh, well, to speak on this particular issue this evening. Is there anyone present now who wishes to address council? On the, this is on the liquor license. I declare this public hearing adjourned. At this time, council will take a five minute break and begin thereafter its regularly scheduled meeting.
Thank you. Thank you. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week particularly Catherine Tig, RN, loving wife, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, and nurse who was so very kind and compassionate to countless patients, including my parents, Laura A. Ford, beloved wife, mother, grandmother of my former students, Shand and Seamus, and great-grandmother, and their dear families and friends who suffered their loss. Roll call, please. Mr. Ruff? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscom? Here. Mr. Joyce? Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third Order 3A, Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluations, dated July 2nd and July 9th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Minutes of the regular meeting of the Scranton Housing Authority held on June 3rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Zoning Hearing Board Agenda for meeting held on Wednesday, July 10th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Audit Status Report from Robert Rossi and Company, dated July 11th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, Tax Assessor's Report for hearing date held on June 26, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, Tax Assessor's Report for hearing date to be held on July 24, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3G, applications along with decisions rendered at the Zoning Hearing Board meeting held on Wednesday, July 10th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Perhaps we should mention what the we did get a notice of the National Night Out, uh, which will be held Tuesday, August 6th at Scranton High School at 6 p.m. Uh, a canine demonstration, fireworks display, um, fire department vehicle ext extrication. Uh, they use the jaws of life to rip apart a car. Pretty neat. Um, there's a uh, information booths from the various crime watch and neighborhood associations and there's always music and refreshments uh, at these uh, and it's sponsored by the scranton police department that's tuesday august 6 6 p.m at scranton high school thank you mrs craig fourth order citizens participation our first speaker this evening is ozzy quinn Thank you. 
and taxpayers. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I want to preface by saying I think, you know, I'm a graduate of the University of Scranton. I graduated major in sociology. That's probably trying to solve the social ills. <laughs> uh, I think that we have to bring closure to this University of Scranton uh, in regards to pilots, nonprofits, not paying taxes. Uh, they sit up there on the hill and they thrive on what they're doing. And they fail to recognize that if the city fails, they're in for a big surprise. And the city is in terrible debt. And I can see the next budget going to come out on board with a big, big tax increase. I can't see where you get any other revenue. If you go ahead and leave the Mayor Doherty borrow again, then shame on you. Uh, I don't think the university uh, caused the problem, but I think it should be part of the solution. Uh, a couple months ago, I saw in the paper that a selected official said that Brown, uh, Scranton should be like Providence, Rhode Island, Brown University. Uh, did so much for uh, the highest employment is from the Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island, economic development. I mean, now, I'm all for jobs. I, mean, I was a card carrier for the IBEW, you know, Local 81. And I'm all for the jobs and everything like that there for everything. But the fact is that how are we going to continue? Now, up in Providence, Rhode Island, this official that was quoted was saying about how well the Brown University, and he compared it with Scranton <laughs> University. Well, Brown University, I researched, contributes $4 million to Providence, Rhode Island's municipal government every year. And there's a memorandum of understanding with all the other colleges and uh, all these institutions in the city that if they buy a private property, fine, but they have to continue paying taxes or part of whatever the, the memorandum is, cites, you know? And I think it's time that we have to do something like this with the University of Scranton. Uh, they have to come up with a bigger, bigger, high into our coffers with a larger amount of money. There's no doubt about it, you know? Uh, we're not, with the number of taxpayers in the city of Scranton, homeowners, property owners, we're not going to be able to take another ba bang, you know? Uh, it, it's going to drive more people out of the city. And uh, we have, uh, I know it's only July, but we got to do something now about this here, and we have to, I think with the University of Scranton, I think there has to be some kind of a way that they got to sign an agreement with the city of Scranton that they're going to commit more monies to the city of Scranton's coffers and that all the other institutions in the city of Scranton do too. I mean, they create jobs, fine, and there's people out there that need jobs, there's no doubt about it. but. Uh, I think enough is enough in regards to them sitting up there on the hill and just keep on going and going and going while the city fails miserably in debt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Elman. Hello, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Before I start, I want to say that a young lady come over to me Saturday down at Kingston, and she said how much she enjoys watching this program because of the relaxed atmosphere and, and, and uh, the congeniality, and she said it wasn't stuffy with rules all the time. Then the most important thing, she said she didn't like me because I was always against this and that and everything else. I, I don't know where she lived. She just was down there at the restaurant. As you know, I'm not a, very happy with the university. I, I consider them just a so happy group when they don't get their way. I think they're a complete mortal enemy of the people of this city. They have helped destroy our, our tax base house by house. Uh, they brag about generating $400 million. 
that they don't care nothing about the people of this city that, that are paying taxes to cover what they've taken. And, uh, I think it's time to go to the state, like I said last week, and have something concrete done about the way they are stealing our tax base from us. That's enough about them. And I'm not being argumentative, but I think I think it was the wrong choice to give Al Boskov all this extra time. Thousands of people in this city have lost their houses. They weren't given 10 minutes extra. This man owes us money that shouldn't have ever been given to him in the first place. He's, he's, he's opened up more stores. He's not in a financial uh, situation, but he's causes them. I, I just, to give him up to 2025 is ridiculous. He ought to be forced to give us our money back now. We're not a bank, and people don't, don't I tell you, they don't care about the mall no more. You, I've talked to, I bet, 50 people over the past year or two. They just, they don't go down there. They just don't, they've lost interest in the mall. There's no restaurants anymore. The mall is going to pieces. I don't know if it's because of mismanagement, the rents are so high for the spaces or what, but there's something wrong down there. Maybe it's all the, the people that go there, they just walk around and don't buy anything. I, I don't know. But this, if, if the mall had been sold a year, a couple of years ago to the university, we might have lost some tax base, but they would have taken over this building eventually, and it would have been everything they need in one place. Now all we have is a dying bunch of businesses and an eyesore. And I've talked to six, eight people that they're going to shun downtown like the plague because of the, the parking meter. Today at lunchtime, a doctor, I, I think he's a dentist, he's already moved from downtown. So there's, I don't know, let's just say 20 or 30 people during the month that, that won't be downtown with him to spend money and, and, and use the parking system. This, this system, I just don't see how it's going to work. I, I was down here this morning, there's parking places all over the place. It's not like it's a shortage or something. I just think that they're the wrong people for it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bob Bullis. Good evening, Council. Bob Bullis, Scranton. Good evening. Uh, to get started, I'd like to ask a couple quick questions of uh, Council. Has any member of council ever attended the University of Scranton or any of their family members? Okay. Uh, has any member of council ever been employed or their family members past or present by the University of Scranton in any type of capacity? Okay. Mr. McGough, I would ask that you recuse yourself. Okay. I believe you have a conflict. My issues here tonight, I sat here and listened to this council and I listened to this caucus. Unfortunately, we were deprived, the citizens of this city, of asking questions of Mr. Scartelli or any of the other people to their qualifications, to their backgrounds. What qualifies them to decide our future in this city? I'm a developer and a business person in this city. I'm born and raised here. I took a historical church that the city was going to demolish in the area $3 they were selling it for, two or three or whatever it was. I saved it. I'm paying $25,000 a year or being assessed in taxes for that church that's now assessed at over $500,000. Now think about that for a moment. Here's a piece of history I saved. Here's a piece of history they're tearing down and not paying one bloody dime into this community. It's appalling. Sure, they're tax exempt right now, and the next building will be tax exempt. They're a nonprofit, they have no money. 
let's reverse the situation here. And members of the university that show up here, they're paid puppets. That's where they work. They're not going to say anything but what they have to say because of the influence that's uh, put upon them. Let's say Mr. McGough, Mr. Lascom, Mr. Rogan, Asi Quinn, well, he's still here, and myself decided to buy the white and tear it down. I think we would have been permitted. And what we wanted to do was take a part of our history the Yankee Lunch, the Liberty Lunch that's no longer in West Side, Keystone Lunch, uh, the two Coney Islands, Scooters Hot Dog Hut, and we made that a part of history, putting hot dog stands in there. With this historical hen group of people, you think they would allow that to be torn down? The heck they would, because we don't have the finance or the influence to politically motivate their decision. And that's what's wrong here. And if this council goes along with what they're doing there, architecturally, that building is as sound and it was better built than anything they'll ever build today. Look at Holy Cross Church that I bought. It's over 100 years old, and you cannot find a flaw in the cement or the concrete or the structure of that church. Those were craftsmen. Those were builders that came here and gave us our history. We tore the church down from Cooper's. Some clown made a statement because I babbled about it being a black parking lot. Well, it didn't do nothing for us. We got nothing out of the parking lot, but we could have had something out of our culture and our history that the diocese and everybody allowed to be destroyed. To make it a parking lot with stripes for a college that pays us nothing. We're here, and I'm sick and tired of it, paying taxes, going through the thing that we have to go through to survive while this so-called nonprofit spends over 40-some million dollars to build just this one building, which is better than half our budget in the city. Yet they have no money. They give you a hundred and some thousand a year. Nothing is more disgraceful, in my opinion, to allow these people to threaten to sue us, too. If you don't bow down, little dog, we're going to kick you in the face and sue you because we got more money than you do because you're a broke city. You can't fight us. And politically, we own you. The lawyers, the judges, everybody is controlled by the University of Scranton here against the people in this city. And I'm speaking out for the little people, not the big and the powerful, the bullies with money. I'm talking about us, the people in this city. That's what the city is. That's what these councils are for. That's what these boards are for. They're for us, not the powerful. That building could be gutted. It could be utilized. Nobody could tell me it can't. It's just an easy way to make more money and get more out of us. And then what are they going to do next? Jump across the little alley to the other building they own already. Remember that. Now you're setting a precedent to tear historical buildings down because you're not going to be able to go backwards. Once you allow it to happen once, look what happened to the clinic on veterans down in Pittston. They don't want it there because they don't want other people coming in there. If you set a precedent, you're going to live by the precedent. In a sense, you're going to live by the sword, die by the sword in this town until none of our history is here. Impose a public service fee once and for all across everybody in this city and bring in the millions of dollars we're entitled to. Made them pay their fair share, 40000 And just so you know, I tended to you many, many years ago for a year and had to move on because I couldn't afford it at that time. So I have no prejudice one way or the other or what goes on in this city. And in my final comment is all those that were in a council today and in the past that took the golf course money that I and many citizens fought to keep, took the interest from that money and squandered it, blew it right down the toilet, go out and see us sweltering in the heat today because we couldn't open the pool. They should all stand and applaud themselves for what they did to the people in this city, to the kids that have nowhere to swim. Tell the university, write a check and fix the darn pools. Maybe you'll get something out of that. And then you Thank can say you, we Mr. did something Bowles. in the city, Mrs. Evans. Then we could say we did something here. And they contributed something other than literally taking us down the toilet for nothing. It's time Thank these consuls and people get a voice put politics to the side and put what's right for us. And I would like one more thing. You hold another caucus 
you bring the board back in and let us have our say with them instead of what council wants to say because the voice we heard tonight isn't the voice of the people thank you thank you thank you and doug miller good evening council doug miller scranton um, good evening. i too would like to uh, once again address this issue uh many concerns over this uh, I was quite troubled by a lot of the things I heard in this uh, caucus tonight uh, statements made by members of HARB certainly uh, troubled me uh, many questions I have uh, just kind of run through them number one I certainly puzzles me how uh, a group can can vote on uh, key issues such as this without having any bylaws that, that's definitely something I'm quite dumbfounded by I think that would be like council voting on legislation without you know having any administrative code or home rule charter or Robert's rules of order to follow so I certainly think there's uh, you know some question questionable areas in that regard uh, secondly uh, I was quite troubled by the statements I heard by members uh, particularly uh, those who have uh, admitted on the record that they have personally uh, done work for the university and yet they're voting on this critical issue I think there's certainly a conflict of interest uh, I personally believe a lot of politics was spewed in this room this evening. Um, I think this whole issue is politically motivated. And uh, we've gotten away from the fact of what this issue uh, needs to be about. The number one priority is the future of this city and the best interest of this city moving forward, ultimately protecting history and looking out for the residents of this city. And uh, I'm going to once again reiterate my feelings. I do not feel that does any of that. Um, the job of HARB, the job of council, is to protect the city's history. It was stated tonight that in 1996 this building went on a list uh, claiming it to be a protective uh, historical structure. So obviously the university was well aware of this throughout the last 17 years. They too had an obligation and still to this day have an obligation to preserve that structure. The fact that uh, it can't be restored, I don't buy that. I think, as it's been stated numerous times tonight, I think this is just uh, an excuse to go out and, and uh, you know, make money for somebody else and ultimately uh, place the burden on the residents of this city like we, we seem to consistently do here. Uh, it was also stated that it's nothing but bricks. There's nothing significant about it. I, pr I take personal offense to that. Um, we had members of the board state that they are not even lifelong residents of this city and they're making these decisions. So how could they have any idea whatsoever as to what's history of this city when they haven't even lived it. Um, I think it's a complete disregard, it's a, it's a complete lack of respect for our city's history to make those statements. Um, and anybody on this council, I, you know, Mr. McGough, Mr. Rogan, I think you've also shown a complete lack of respect for this city's history. And you could, la you know, you could smirk all you want, but you know, you've shown your true colors and I'm quite disappointed in you as well. Uh, you have an obligation as an elected official to be our representative and you failed to do that by taking this position. The university could build this building anywhere they'd like to. They've shown that they're, they're bullies with money, as it's been stated here for years. And that's exactly the case. They are, quite frankly, bullies with money. And I think it's time for council to stand up and put their foot down and let them know that you're not going to be pushed around. That, yeah, they have a lot of money. They have a lot more money than we do. And yes, they probably could buy this city if they wanted to. But this is our community. This is our town. And we, as Scrantonians, need to put them in their place and let them know that this is our community and we're not going to allow them to take over our city. I understand this building is already off the tax rolls and it will remain so. But my issue is moving forward. We talk about the long term. Yeah, let's talk about the long term. What's going to happen when they want to go and buy another property? What's going to happen with the Adlin building that they recently bought? I believe it was last summer they purchased that. Well, that's going to be taken off the tax rolls. We don't have any issue over that. You know, I just think it's time to look out for the residents of this city. I don't. Uh, feel you should be uh, pushed around, pinned in a corner on this. Um, I'm asking you to go against this tonight uh, to look out for the little guy in this community. Uh, as I said, there's no reason why this building can't be incorporated with the new proposed building. A $47 million building that was noted tonight, almost half the city's budget for this year. And that's just, that says a lot. You know, I think that, you know, we need to take a look at this and uh, you know, determine what's best for this city moving forward. You know, uh, I'm looking out for the little guy here, and uh, you know, I think we've allowed the university to get a free ride for far too long, and uh, it's time they're held accountable. And I think the uh, the start is tonight by denying the demolition of this structure, um, and and I think that's the best course of action we need to take. 
and let them know quite well that they're not going to continue to dictate what goes on in this city as they've allowed this administration has allowed that to happen for 12 years now it's time to show some leadership you know it was a statement was made in the paper by I believe it might have been a member of HARB or somebody who, who's made a comment that you know we don't want to be cowards that's exactly right we don't want to be cowards and continue to bow down to the university stand up for the people do what's best and vote against this and finally tonight just on the piece of legislation a few seconds here on the uh, DPW contract an issue was raised last week that uh, by a member of council mr. Rogan that we feel that the next mayor should uh, take part in the discussion of the new uh, the new contract don't find that to be appropriate at all um, we don't even know who the next mayor is going to be at this time um, and even if we did hypothetically speaking um, that individual has not been elected candidates uh, I don't feel should be a part of decision-making process that's why we have elected officials if that was the case uh, then all the candidates should be a part of the budgets and this and that uh, so I, I think that's just a lame excuse to back out of a piece of legislation if I can recall a few months back we voted on a clerical union contract and I don't remember at that time us being concerned about who the next mayor was so I think it's a fair contract when you take a look at the services they provide if anything we can consider a study uh, not a drastic study but a study to be done in the future to see how we could better ourselves moving forward in terms of our public uh, public works thank, thank you. you thank you Dave Dobson Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. I'll try and talk fast. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Okay. Uh, a few weeks ago, I requested that you uh, consider a letter of support for Steamtown. So I'd appreciate, I don't know if we're going on uh, break this year in August, but I'd appreciate if you'd really consider that. It's supposed to be a centerpiece of the downtown, and Congress keeps cutting the money back. Uh, now, I have a few different things from the newspapers. I'll submit them to uh, uh, Ms. Marciano. Uh, more tax exempts. County, still on building search. How about state revenue replacement now? It's going to go off the tax rolls of the county. County targets business. Program targets businesses. Well, they're going to cut taxes for, uh, replace taxes for local communities that get businesses to move in. Sounds like a great idea, but uh, are they going to raise my county taxes for some other town? I don't think so. They, they're parked here enough. We have enough county in our town. Legislator advances bill to sell Army Reserve. Now, I wrote a little note in there. Plan announced 10 minutes after Autobahn close vote. $30 million. Sewer panel box at its $2.1 million bill. In that case, I'm on the side of the sewer panel. Why? Millions given the suburbs and grants for sewer authorities. Millions. It's going to be $108 to $108 for Jefferson Township uh, for sewer authority. So we can't be doing everything wrong by grouping together here. We're being taken advantage of. New state tax credit to help, help startups await final vote. Uh, now, only trouble is they didn't include class 2A and they will not drop us to class 3. So we're out once again. Thank you. And I have a letter here uh, from the editor about the good neighbors. And Mr. Oliver Morgan has a point that other people have refused to pay and actually scoffed at um, at council over a pilot uh, but there and again uh, it's time that we start to pay taxes when we move outside of the original zone I agree with Ozzy it, it's gone too far and I don't want to sound like a bumpkin picking on education I don't want to sound that way 
So, uh, and here's uh, Give Back Park by Chris Phillips, and it notes several promises from prominent politicians when a Southside sports complex was purchased. And they facilitated it with all of their promises, and they were going to get us help to replace this ball field. Well, years later, the ball field isn't replaced. The money's gone. Who knows where? Now, uh, I already had, uh, addressed the pilots, and there are a few people uh, I would note to Mr. Morgan that uh, do give us pilots other than the university, although not many. Um, now, on bankruptcy or privatized, please, I don't want to hear any more of it. I just want a city that runs right. I don't want to hear about it. It's, it's, uh, there's the only people that I trust less than government officials at times are corporations. So if you don't take any more corporate money, uh, it's a plus with me. And that's been your problem all along. You people haven't taken any corporate money, and you're not interested in any corporate money, and they're all mad at you because you're not dancing to their tune. And uh, as far as Harb is concerned, there was a really nasty remark in the paper about you, uh, Mr. Joyce, and I would appreciate that it never be said again. Never, ever again. Do I want to hear somebody mocking counsel over a disagreement? And uh, oh, by the way, once again, anybody want to buy the Hilton? They've been here four times. What is this, the fourth time it's sold? You should know, Mrs. Evans. Well, the fourth time times. about, right? I okay. <laughs> Anybody wants to buy it, it's up for sale once again. And by the way, they were in town two times before, and they took all the money out of the uh, Lackawanna train station and sold it two years later after all the government. Now, the Golden Parrot goes to, and I'll make this quick, uh, people in our armed forces are furloughed in place. So in other words, if you're on a nuclear submarine or if you're on an aircraft carrier, you get furloughed in place. So you get to stay on a ship and not get paid for the day. And if you've ever seen a sleeping area on an aircraft carrier, it's about the size of a human coffin. And there's very few other places. Oh, by the way, on a nuclear submarine, you can't make any noise. You have to lay in your bed. and. Uh, <laughs> not make any noise because we're silent running. And also our Congress for, uh, as they got for uh, creating these conditions with their, uh, with their uh, sequester. So, uh, bok bok, Mr. Congress. And please consider that uh, letter about Steamtown because we're pro that's one more broken promise and the place is hurting. Thank you. And Thank you. If, you, if you have a chance, go down there at seven bucks to do a tour of the museum, and, and it's really interesting. Our Thank next you. speaker is Marie Schumacher. Good evening, Council. One evening. small item of housekeeping uh, before I talk to the main subject. Uh, Mr. Loscom, I would request that you provide the police arrest by charge for the first half of 2013 uh, by zip code, if possible, next week. Thank you. Okay. I'll begin tonight by reading a quote from, the re from a recent letter from the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Quote, every year our nation's history, our beautiful landmark building, buildings are threatened by the wrecking ball. It's more than heartbreaking to watch the destruction. Adding to the heartbreak of the agenda item this evening authorizing the demolition of the YWCA building is you are putting the cart before the horse. There is a lawsuit regarding the decision of the zoning board, so this historical building may be sacrificed and then find out the zoning board prevails. How sad would that be? Approving this demolition will set a precedent and no historical building will henceforth be safe from the wrecking ball. The harb should probably be disbanded. 
in, uh, I'm really confident that uh, Charlie Jefferson or Art Russo or some other developer would be interested in that YWCA building if the Scranton uh, University does not feel it's uh, any value to them any longer. Uh, this issue should be tabled until the zoning issue has been resolved by the court at a minimum. I know an August decision might interfere with your August vacation, but I believe the cause is just. On the HARB, I did some research, and I could not find, even with the help of a professional researcher, any legal notices announcing the meeting dates and times for HARB uh, for their 2013 meetings, which would make all actions taken by this board null and void, I believe. Uh, I also checked the 2013 agendas and could find no record of City Council having received minutes of the HARB meetings, as they do with other authorities and boards. Um, as with so many issues, the Goliaths of the university power over the historical significance of the YWCA. Yet the university itself bestowed an intercession grant to one of their associate professors of history in 2009 to, quote, research records concerning Scranton's YWCA, end quote. The research is part of her un ongoing study of women's history in Scranton. Was this grant laying the groundwork to challenge the historical de designation, perhaps? Who knows? While I doubt that any of you did any personal research on the historical significance of the YWCA, I did and found this totally ironic. One of the reasons the YWCA had to be sold was a shortage of funds. Despite the fact that the YWCA received income through leasing a parking lot, Fully half of the income was used to pay re realty taxes on the parking lot portion of their property. Compare this with the University of Scranton. Last year, this council enacted a tax on parking garages and parking lots. What did the Goliath of the university do? They sued the city and refused to pay the tax. It appears a new rule is being invoked by council. Do anything you want in this city as long as it brings money into our coffers. Morality has no place. I now know who really runs this city. I wonder whether Mr. Joyce and Mr. Rogan really believe all the two-year construction employees will be Scranton residents or is local and not the city primary any longer. I fully understand property taxes for 2014 will probably be raised by this council by more than 50%. So perhaps putting revenue first is a simple act of desperation. I also find it ironic that a Christian university owes, that owes so much to this city, including, including the use of eminent domain to take perfectly good homes and gift the property to the university, tax-free status, grants, uh, including, again ironically, uh, a Kresge grant to purchase and renovate the YWCA when it was originally acquired. We provide fire protection and now you want another hook and ladder building. Uh, would choose to demonstrate, to demolish the history of another Christian structure with a rich historic pedigree. Now, after months of planning this demolition, perhaps even years, the Goliath known as the University of Scranton is demanding the city jump, and your response apparently is, how high? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Andy Spiraglia? Andy Sprague, Citizens of Scranton, fellow Scrantonians. Good evening. Well, I'll probably be speaking on the YW2. Actually, to look at that building, it's not very historic. It really isn't. We can find a, a building like that throughout this valley almost everywhere. But the use in use of that building makes it historic. That building was the Ellis Island of Scranton. When the people came in from outside the city, they had to have a place to, to, to live. And then they would go back out to their farms or wherever, or even coming into the city, you know, from overseas, they still had to have a place to stay. And that's where the Y came in. God knows how many famous mothers lived in that Y. 
or how many children that their mothers had really made contributions to the world and to the city. That's what makes that building historic, not the design. That outside facade really isn't that great. But the in use of it makes it very historic. When you tear down, it's down in, uh, down in below Harrisburg, uh, down there at Gettysburg, they're keeping the train station because, of course, the president got off at it to give his Gettysburg address. That made that train station historic. And that's what you gotta live at. The outside building doesn't necessarily make anything historic, but it's the use of the building that really makes it historic. And you gotta look at that. You gotta look at the use of that building and how many famous people might have even slept there besides George Washington, which I doubt. But this is what I mean. A lot of people slept in the Y. See, I don't think any of you remember the Y. I don't think any are old enough to remember the Y. I had the luck to take care of the elevator in the Y and the university too. I don't fault the university, really. It's just that you have to look at a building in use, how it was used before you can really make a decision on the building. The facade, like I said before, is not very great. I mean, you look at the Masonic Temple and you compare it, that building to it and you see right away, it's not very good. Actually, it's not very good designed. It was functional. It was a functional design and that's what it was for. But the historic use of that building is historic. And that's what you're really voting on. The historic use of that building and not necessarily the building itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Faith Paranis Granton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Mrs. Evans, you were correct before when you said this was a very enlightening meeting with the hard members. I personally think, my own opinion, that Mr. Moore should be taken off that board immediately. Immediately. He went out of his way not to let the other members vote to reconsider this because he wanted he had his own agenda. I can't prove what it is, but it was very apparent that he's fighting tooth and nail for university, not for the preservation of historic buildings, which is why this group is there to keep these buildings, not to have them torn down. And it will set a precedent. And then the judge will come back and say, well, you did this then, so we have to do it again. You want to take that chance? I want to see tonight. I hope you don't table this vote. Like Ruth Schumacher said, wait until the zoning board. To me, there's not a judge in this county that will vote against the University of Scranton. To me, that's a done deal. It's just a matter of time. No way do I think the zoning board will win that. So do what you have to do. But I want to find out who up there, who up there is a public servant and who up there is a politician? Who's really for the people? And who's for their own agenda? We're going to find out with this vote. And the union people are going to come up here. I'm a union member, a union member. They say there's not many jobs for contractors. Well, how come every time you call a contractor, you can't get anybody to come to your house? And once they start something, they never come back and finish it. So they have a reputation too. And the university is here again tonight and they're gonna plead their case. Are they ever here any other time saying we'd like to give you money? You don't see them unless they want something. They're never ever here to help the city. They're here to take from the taxpayers constantly. And the city and people in the city of Scranton have had it up to here. Because we have to pay the taxes for all the buildings that they tore down. We have to make up for that missing money that they took. But that's not the reason not to vote for this. The reason not to vote for this is because you want to preserve an historic building and make sure that it never happens again. And I hope this council has some kind of power to look into the minutes of these hard meetings. And I think it would be good if ECTV would film those meetings. I think we would learn very much the actions that take place the stifling, 
that this chairman rules over these members, that they have no say in anything. God help them if they try. It's, it's, it's like Germany. So tonight, I hope you do do the vote. And I pray to God you vote not to demolish this building. Because we're going to see who up there is really elected to serve the people. And the ones that aren't, you're going to have to face the consequences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, good evening, Council. My name is Jack Figured. I've been here before. Spoke on the university uh, projects a number of times. I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Scranton. First of all, I want to know who here doesn't have someone right now that's unemployed or underemployed and wouldn't benefit from a good paying job? Anybody in this room that doesn't have a friend or family member? Second of all, the university pays $175,000 a year in lieu of taxes. In the scheme of things, this is a small amount, maybe. But let's, let's, let's look at the tax bill that we all pay as residents of the Scrant city of Scranton. You have a school tax, a county tax, and a city tax. The city tax in my home is probably $600 a year. By my calculations, that $175,000 pays for 350 homes for every year that it has torn down. Could we do better? I hope someday that we will. You've heard Rick Schrader from the IBW. You've heard uh, Drew Simpson from the Carpenters tell you about the unemployment rate in the area. And true, this job will not benefit all union members. Yes, we will do the majority of the construction on the project and we will pay, and Marie, a lot of city workers will be there from my local, from the carpenters, and from the electricians, and all the trades. We put our people in geographical areas so they don't have to travel too far from their homes because of the price of gas and stuff like that. So will, the, will this benefit it? Yes. You heard from Jim Devers. He's told you that this building will be raised and an eight-story building will be put up. And they need this to facilitate their students there and a great paying job. You go to physical therapy, I've had someone that's been there recently, that's a nice job to have, okay? A lot of city residents will be there. Uh, hopefully they'll go through this program and get good paying jobs, whether they stay in the area or not, remains to be seen. If we don't go further, we'll never have anybody employed in any good jobs here. Second of all, I wanna say that uh, for everyone sitting here tonight, I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to speak here. I'd like to thank all the council members again for taking the time to go over this. It's been a lot of controversy. There's been a lot of things said. As far as the hard vote, anytime you can get eight members of a committee together to vote on anything and seven of them vote, they voted no matter how long the discussion was, what it took. That's what people in this country fight and die for every day to have a say. In, and they did have their say. But the majority rules, just like on the council. So I'd like to thank everybody for your, your, your time and everything else, and hopefully you'll do the right thing here. Look at the major scheme of things. Just don't look at the, the university as being big and bad and forcing things down our, our throat, because they're not in this instance. They're taking a building that's been off the tax rolls for a long time. Is it a grand building? Like Andy said, it's, 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 it's a decent building. It's, it's a common building of that era, design. Uh, the design back then was multi-width. I'm sure none of you know what multi-width is. The brick uh, walls in that building are probably 12 inches thick. It's a wood structure on the inside. There's no place for air conditioning. There's no place for heating. There's no place for technology. Look at, look at the rage today. Everyone watches all of the home improvement shows on TV, all day long, all day Saturday and Sunday. You see where they're given $100,000 to renovate two rooms in a house. They start to tear the house apart. They find out there's structural problems with it, and they're lucky to get a bathroom out of it. $45 million doesn't go far today, okay? So what are you going to do? You're going to have a building there that has no functional use. They've done a study on it. 
the university has hired engineers said this is what we intend to use the building for can we you can we do this the, the engineers have come back and said no you have an architect that has looked over the building he said he's probably looked at two dozen buildings over his career in the city of Scranton and saved many of them for some things yes you can do work in uh, if you have an office space you can stud the walls out and stuff like that but when you're doing ma major renovation and you're running technology and new air conditioning and new heating and stuff like that this building doesn't meet the use there's no significant historical society or uh, advantage to it I've been a bricklayer for four, 38 years that's my life I built these buildings I know what can be done with them I know the structure of them yes yeah, yes it's an old building the walls are probably 18 inches thick okay what would you do what would you do when you started to tear that apart and you open up asbestos abatement problems lead paint problems in the windows no matter who you are when you do construction on your home the worst thing you fear is opening up structural problems the best thing for this building is to be raised a new building put in its place and we'll have something to look at for the next 50 years and every one of my men and the construction workers and all the people that work on this building will be very proud of that building just as those people who worked on it a hundred years ago were proud of the work that they did so please take all this stuff into consideration and, and vote hopefully in the right way today thank you thank you is there anyone else My name is Uta Dreher, I live on East Mountain, and I am a physical therapist. I have been a physical therapist for practicing for, I think, 54 years on two continents. And I came to Scranton <coughs> in 1968 into some kind of a situation um, that was like peace core work in the biggest, in the richest country in the world and um, there were four physical therapists in town at the time it was Edith and George and Tony and Rosie and I was number five and now I congratulate the city for the medical advances that have taken place since I'm here I consider myself part of the renaissance of Scranton having been here all the time, have at least observed it, but also contributed with it. And um, I thought, you know, how wonderful that new building is, a physical therapy building, yeah, wonderful. But would someone come visiting great Pennsylvania and say, oh, let's go to Scranton and see that new physical therapy building. Uh, that's, yeah. That could be anywhere, so especially physical therapists, they could walk to classes and so it doesn't need to be downtown in a historic district. Thank you for your considerations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening. My name is Paul Casparo. I'm a member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I'm also president of the union. Thank you for giving me some time to speak tonight. I've been following this in the paper for the last few weeks, actually the last few months, and uh, I have great pride in saying to some of the people who had courage enough to change their positions on this uh, University of Scranton project. You know, some things about, I'm a taxpaying citizen of Scranton also. I live in the North Scranton, part of the city, Providence, and uh, I've been a member of the IBEW for 35 years. Uh, you know, the building trades people uh, are looking forward to this project for a long time. We'll put a lot of people to work, and what's that going to do? That's going to put money back into the tax rolls. They're going to be spending money in the stores, shops, restaurants, bars, or whatnot, and, and that's good for our area. You know, the problem with northeastern Pennsylvania is sometimes we're afraid to move forward. You know, we're, we like to stay, stay, stay in history, uh, don't tear anything down, let's not move forward. Case in point, when they were going to build Montage Mountain, every, you know, there were so many people against that. Lackawanna County Stadium, the same thing. You know, well, we can't build a stadium, nobody will ever go to the games, and, you know, the rest is history. You know, one thing about uh, people on city council here, you know, 
at election time, guess who they come to looking for votes? They come to the building trades because they know there's over 10,000, 15,000 building trades members, Lackawanna, Luzerne, Wayne, Pike, Monroe County, and guess what? They're coming to us looking for votes. Well, now we're coming to you looking for help. We need your help now, and we appreciate anything you can do for us. And you know what? Do the right thing. You know, the building's an old building. It's, it's over 100 years old. It needs to be demolished. Let's, let's move forward. Let's get the city moving forward and put people back to work. Like Jack Figured said, we have relatives, friends, neighbors who are unemployed or underemployed. Looking forward to going to work on some of these projects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jim Devers. I'm the Associate Vice President for Facilities Operations at the University. By my count, I've been here about four or five times uh, offering testimony or reasons why we need to demolish this building and move forward. And I'm not going to reiterate that. But what I want to do is give council members the opportunity to ask me any questions they have regarding this project. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Um, what's the current timetable for this project? The current timetable, if we're able to get uh, approval uh, for the demolition permit. We have worked with Quandell, our construction manager, and basically right now we're, we're two weeks behind, the, or two months behind the original schedule. We can make up that time at a, at a significant cost of overtime, uh, protection for winter conditions and things like that, and be able to uh, occupy the building for the late summer of 2015. Okay. Now, what is the exact reason that the historical site had to be used and another location couldn't be used? Well, first of all, there's no other location, but the most important part is that the adjacent building, McGurran Hall, houses the education department, counseling, uh, health services, and nursing departments. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, and exercise science are closely related to those to those disciplines. There'll be interdisciplinary teaching that goes on between all those disciplines that are housed in those two buildings. Uh, as I stated many times, the floor levels of those buildings do not match up. When you're dealing with people with disabilities, clients with disabilities, it's very important to have the building accessible. And really the only way we can make an accessible building is to, is to raise uh, the existing Leahy Hall, which consists of two buildings with floor levels that do not match up. Okay. The, Mr. Devers. Yes, sir. Um, concerning the zoning board, the University of Scranton has appealed through the courts the decision of the zoning board. Do you have a court date established for that? No, sir. Hearing? We do not have a court date established. And um, if, if, in fact, the, a variance weren't approved through the courts. Would the project continue with another plan, let's say, architectural plan? We would be forced to do that. This is a, this is a, a top priority for the university. We need this building. Um, we have made commitments basically to accreditation boards for occupational therapy and physical therapy. So we would, yes, need to somehow adjust the design uh, uh, to uh, al allow us to build this building without having to go back to the zoning board. So it's safe to say that this property would not go undeveloped? Oh, no. No, we need, we, we need the building. We, we need to develop this, this project. I would just ask if, if this legislation passes in its current form, and obviously I'm hopeful that it will, um, you're saying that there'll be jobs created within a few months of the demolition of the building. As soon as we get the permit, there'll be jobs created for the demolition contractor. There'll also be uh, uh, fast-tracking uh, things like the uh, structural steel and other long lead items uh, and putting those out to bid uh, through the uh, construction manager. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else?
Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Deborah Nehus, West Granton. Um, I ran down here and I just have um, a whole bunch of uh, notes ad hoc in nature. And I've watched this particular topic be addressed now for several weeks in the newspapers here, zoning board, et cetera. And I think my biggest concern at this point is witnessing the unfolding of flawed procedures. Um, concerns here tonight were brought forward regarding the voting of HARB. Take it another degree further, you hear some of the individuals on this particular board make statements that were quite frankly almost incomprehensible to me as a person with a degree from the university in history and communication, which I proudly and has, has served me well in my life beyond um, my career. So I have nothing but good things to say about the university as an educational institution regarding education. But when I heard various people on this board state, make statements such as, well, it's not architecturally pretty and it's not really much to look at and it's just a bunch of bricks and we have all these other overriding concerns of jobs and money and we have pressures, I, I had to like just sit back and say, and I think it was brought up here before, that is not your task. And I did hear some of the members of that board state that their job as a member of that board is to protect the history of this community. And there are buildings across this nation that are frankly little more than shacks that their historical review boards protect. They don't raise them. Motown in Detroit, various birthplaces throughout the country of notable people that live there are preserved. Why? Because of the symbolism and the memories that they generate and create what's a community, a community of people. You can't just raise that and not have it ripple with repercussions throughout a community. That memory is gone once you level it. You can make little notations and nice presentations, but the actual building that I could point to, to my grandchild and say, you know, I used to go there and swim on Saturdays and that's where women went and, and provide history, that's lost. You can't provide that in a display or with a few architectural remnants left over. So I think that is what's not being considered here, which is the primary purpose of a historical board. Then you can go on and discuss whether or not it's historically significant enough or sufficiently to keep. But I haven't heard that process take place, not until tonight. We're just starting to, just starting to. And that brings me to my other concern. You know, I graduated from the university many, many years ago. But I'll never forget one father that I did have, their father Gannon, he was my philosophy uh, instructor, I believe, and he saw how Deborah Nehus used to just fly into the university. I wasn't happy about staying here in Scranton. I had a full scholarship at the University of Pittsburgh, but because of my Catholic upbringing, I stayed home because my father had a massive coronary and I had a younger brother and sister to look after. Father Gannon noticed that I was just a person that came and left real quick after class. And he stopped me once. And he said, Miss Nehus, are you a pupil at this university? Or are you a member of the student body? And I cannot tell you, it, it stopped me in my tracks. But he even noticed but they actually took the tamed time to ask what was going on. Why was I not engaging myself more in my student body matters? Because he saw possibly something in me that was not being tapped or taken advantage of. And I can't tell you how many times in my life that scenario 
has played through my mind. So I would like to ask the university that instilled in me principles that have served me well in life of sensitivity, consensus building, listening to everybody even if they don't seem important, conscientiousness and compassion. They're not just things that you learn in our religion class. Those were instilled in me to show in my life, my daily life, and that's what's troubling to me is I don't see the procedure regarding this issue exhibiting, and it saddens me to say this, any of those various principles from my alma mater. So I would ask the university, let's start talking. If we're going to lose this building, let's start talking and start acting, and I want to ask them, are you a member of this community, of this city of Scranton, or are you merely a resident? And that echoes what Father Gannon asked me. And I would ask for them to be more forthcoming, more honest, and understand that buildings are more than just bricks and mortar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Chrissy, you came out of retirement, huh? Everybody was worried where you've been. Yeah, don't forget when I told you about the three game, remember? July 31st, I told you, remember in the hallway? We talked about it. So I make one support to kids. Thank you. Thank Take you. care, buddy. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Gray? 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, just a couple of responses to things that were um, said. Um, equa I, I'm sure that the University of Scranton would appreciate um, any comparison that was made to Brown University um, that they would be on par with an Ivy League school I think they would welcome that um, comparison and also the, the city doesn't own Leahy Hall the University of Scranton owns Leahy Hall and it's their decision what to do with that hall and, and, and how to use it, and the manner in which to use it. And, and I think that in some cases uh, we need to respect how property owners, and they are the property owner, how property owners utilize their property. Um, I was asked to recuse myself from vote on this. Um, I'll emphatically say no. Um, I have not been a student at the University of Scranton for many years. Um, I went to graduate school there and then uh, subsequently took a couple of courses in um, psychology uh, later on. Yes, I was employed there. I was an assistant coach for a number of years, actually a volunteer assistant. Uh, and, and then uh, one year as an assistant basketball coach with the women's program. Um, and then I, was, I did serve as an adjunct professor for two semesters, and that was well over five years ago. Um, so I have that current time, no ties to the University of Scranton, and um, no reason to recuse myself from the vote. Um, and, and the last thing I, on the University of Scranton, it, people keep talking about the burden that this is placing on the city. Um, I, I still have not heard anyone say anything about how this burdens either the city or the residents of the city of Scranton. Um, yes, does it have some historic value? Uh, I agree. Um, but there is no burden. There is no little guy that's being hurt by this legislation. Um, and I, I, it's, to me, it's just a bit of demagoguery demagoguery, can't get that word out, um, you know, to talk about that um, idea that somehow this project is hurting the taxpayer or hurting the city. Um, but uh, more, I guess, when we get to the legislation. Um, other things, uh, I did receive a phone call from a 
a lady in Manuka that contacted me concerning an overgrown lot next to her home. Um, I subsequently called Mr. Dewar. Um, DPW went out, looked at the lot, and did um, partially clear the lot for her, and then told me that further work would be done. They didn't have the right equipment. And um, the lady called me back and was very thankful. She said the people that came to, to work on the property uh, next to her home were um, extremely courteous um, and did a great job. And she would just like to, uh, you know, a public thank you to those people that, that did that. And, and lastly, and um, very briefly, uh, the Pell meeting this week was rather lengthy and um, somewhat informative. Um, last week, we received an update letter from, from Pell concerning um, 2013, but more importantly, the uh, 2014. And in that update, um, they were projecting somewhere around a $15 million deficit for two, 2014. And it, it seemed to be drastic. Uh, the numbers seemed to be a drastic change. And at the meeting on Monday, we asked, or I asked, and Mrs. Craig was there, and also asked for an explanation of how the, that number was um, arrived at. Um, because the, the figures they gave us um, looked at a $5 million deficit for 2013. And the only reason for that deficit was a change in the figures for the arbitration award, which we budgeted at 17 million, but the actual number will probably be closer to 22 million. And so that put, made a $5 million deficit. And I asked, I said, so otherwise, other than that difference, the 2013 budget is basically balanced, to which they responded yes. Uh, there's you know, some slight differences, which then begged the question, how do we get from what is essentially a balanced budget to a $15 million deficit for 2014? Um, and they did provide us with some updated figures, some uh, more explanation. I don't want to get into all of that, um, but I'm sure that we on council will be taking a look at those as we move forward because it's, it's those figures that they provided that will be used for a number of purposes. And, and that was the other thing that I brought up to, to the uh, representatives from Pell. Um, we're, try we're using these figures to um, justify a commuter tax, possibly. Uh, we're looking to use these figures for um, the borrowing that may be, that's necessary to pay the arbitration award and the pension, minimum payment for the pension. We're using it for budget preparation and we're using it, the same figures for the revised recovery plan. And it, it, it seems as though we're at sometimes working at cross purposes, you know, with all of these. And I think that we're going to need some major explanation and, uh, you know, discussion on how these figures are arrived at and how they will be resolved for 2014. Um, and at the end of the meeting, uh, Mr. Cross from Pell did say that he would be, you know, uh, that he would be available to uh, come to a caucus to explain the figures and to um, explain their recommendations. And maybe uh, sometime in August or, or excuse me, sometime in September or October um, that we could arrange that so that we do have um, a better understanding of the numbers that are being provided. And that is all I have. Thank, thank you. you. Councilman Broken. Yes, thank you. Um, just a few very quick comments. I'll save the majority of my remarks um, for the voting portion of the meeting. Um, first, there have been a lot of comments tonight from council members and from residents regarding the August recess. Um, I would like to once again, for another year, um, 
reiterate my opposition to council taking a recess in the month of August. Even if there is not legislation coming down, I believe council should still meet um, for citizens' issues and also for a number of caucuses that I believe we need to have. Um, one of them regarding the mall, and I know I saw Mr. Joyce will be making a motion to table that. I believe that's the right course of action um, at, at this point in time until we could get that information. Um, I'm hopeful in the future that the August recess will be removed from the rules of council, something I'll fight very hard for next year um, when the rules are rewritten. Um, one quick comment regarding the University of Scranton issue before we proceed. Most of the debate tonight that you in the audience and in the TV audience will hear will be regarding this project. This is certainly one of the bigger issues facing the city of Scranton. What is important that we keep, that people keep in mind when looking at this issue is what we're actually voting on. As a council member, I believe we all need to look at what's best for the city of Scranton as a whole. There are questions regarding HARB and how their meetings were conducted, how they should have been conducted, how they weren't, but that's nothing that count city council can act upon. HARB has changes they need to make in how their meetings are, are run. That's their issue. Council's issue is whether or not we should accept their certificate of appropriateness for this project. You will hear council members cite that is a reason for opposition. You will hear council members cite the zoning board as an issue, as a reason to oppose this measure. The zoning issue is completely separate from the HARB issue. The HARB issue is specifically on whether it's appropriate to raise this structure. The zoning issue is specifically regarding the construction of a new building. I know council has been assured numerous times from representatives of the University of Scranton that regardless of what happens with the zoning appeal that a new building will be placed on that property if the building is raised. And that's the issue we're looking at. The zoning issue could take years to play out after appeal and appeal and appeal. We've seen that happen before with many other issues in the city. Also other issues that may be brought up that are another distraction are general issues regarding the University of Scranton. Pilots. Do I think the University of Scranton should contribute more to the city? I do. Do I think there are many issues that the city of Scranton and the University of Scranton need to work out? Absolutely. But that is not relevant to this specific project. What's relevant to this project is whether it's best for the city and its residents and the workers and the city coffers or if it's not. And that's pretty black and white. One more comment. I see that there will be a motion made later this meeting trying to tie accepting the certificate of appropriateness to the zoning decision. I firmly believe that these are two, as I stated before, these are two separate issues. And anyone who would vote to tie these together obviously doesn't want to see this project progress in a speedy manner. Um, I'm hopeful if this motion is made, it's defeated, and I'm hopeful that the legislation will pass in the original form that we've been debating for many weeks now. Um, I will have many more comments on this issue and others um, when the voting portion of the meeting comes up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a few uh, quick remarks. Um, regarding the August recess, it's not a matter of uh, council rules. It's included in the Home Rule Charter. So if indeed in the future a council hopes to change that, then they're going to have to deal with the issue of the Home Rule Charter. Well, in, addition, on that. in addition, the representatives of the mall associates have already scheduled their caucus for September 26th, as we were notified by Ms. Abley. They're coming in from out of town and they're unable to attend at any time prior to that date. Further, according to Ms. Abley, uh, the approval for this particular uh, loan extension is needed by December 2013. And uh, then finally, the amendment that is being uh, proposed this evening was drafted by 
and recommended by our city solicitor, Boyd Hughes. I would just reply regarding the recess in 2005, and I believe you were in the majority of that, and you, you also support it. Um, meeting throughout the month of August and and at that time I did because council was facing the foreclosure of the Hilton Hotel and we are currently and facing that was that was going to happen at any given time and it was the request of the president at, at that time Mr. DeBilio and Mr. Courtright that council remain in session that August just for example as council remained in session last August when we faced an emergency well we came back into session because my motion to meet throughout August was defeated last year um, I don't want to belabor this point I know it's a, a losing battle but I do hope in the future that we will meet in August and we'll debate the other issues uh, in the voting portion of the meeting and councilman Lasco Excuse me. Uh, I guess I'll get into it again, too. Um, some of it will be repetitious, but Mr. Rogan asked the question, what are we voting on? I may have a different take on what are we voting on. It seems that everybody's missing the whole point. This isn't a union issue. Obviously, I've, if I vote against it, being a union man, I won't have union support. But that's besides the point. I have 77,000 people I represent here, too. Um, you know, we're letting the emotions of the economy come into play here. And a university is using that to their benefit by getting the unions coming here with their rallying call. And anybody that knows me knows I bleed union. So nobody has to come and tell me. We're missing the whole point in this. The point is about a historic building, and nobody could tell me, no architect could stand here and tell me it cannot, it is not feasible to put in. It may cost a few extra bucks, but to build with that, believe me, I have somewhat of a background, and I know quite a few architects. I work for many myself. The problem is, it's not an issue of should the university pay us more money. That's another day. We all know where I stand on that also. That's for another time. The issue at hand right now is, did the Historic Architecture Review Board do their due diligence with this project? After listening tonight, it appears to me there was a little bit of push there, a little bit of aggressiveness to get this done. That's my take on it. Maybe someone else will, will take differently. But that's my take on it. It has everything to do with the history of the building, nothing to do with the unions or employees or anything. If the university would compromise and, and incorporate that corner of the building, there's a lot, there's, there's the same amount of work, maybe even more for the unions in this case. That's all they have to do. Work with, with HARB, work with us, Come up with a plan that's going to do everything, and I'm in favor of it. And I, what I'm saying here may be for not anyway, because the, the vote may pass regardless, which is why we're here. And why I gave everybody the opportunity to bring this vote to the panel again. You know? I have the ability to see it in black and white. It's not about what the UO should pay us. It's not about you know, can the building be rehabbed or not, which I believe it can. Um, so I, I don't believe that's an issue. I believe that building can be incorporated into the new building. Um, you're talking about different levels. Look at Mercy Hospital. They're different levels. They have elevators that open both sides. There's nothing that's going to, you know, change my mind on that aspect. But, you know, yes, definitely, money is an issue. This city is cash strapped, but to be pushed into the wall and say, hey, look at all the permit foot money we're going to get and all that. Just think if we made that decision with the parking agreement. We'd be paying double for a parking contractor right now if we didn't sit back. We needed that money bad, but we delayed it. And we sat back and said, it should be done this way. In my four years here, I've seen a lot, and I've seen a lot of this lacking. Things being pushed certain ways to go certain ways 
without going through the right process, without going through a public process. I, left, I had an open mind, as I stated earlier. I could go either way on this vote. And, uh, but, you know, the more I heard this evening, and, and, and I've heard a little bit beyond that that I can't even express here on some of the pressure, um, I just feel, you know, that the deck of cards was dealt. This is what we're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. And we'll get all these organizations rallying behind us and we don't have to spend a dime. We'll threaten the votes, we'll threaten the, 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 the council members, you know. We'll use the power of the press. That Scranton Times knows my name good, believe me. I'm in every editorial anymore and I'm proud of it because when I know the Times doesn't like me, I'm on the right side. Believe me. Because they're just as guilty as anybody of, of worrying about what they're going to get and who they're going to get, not helping you. And, uh, you know, look at perfect example. Look at the Oppenheim's building. They had a major general arm fire in there. They could have opted to tear that down. No, nope, they rebuilt that. This fine lady in the front row here, I'm sorry, Uta? Yeah. She showed me a book on, on buildings in Germany after the war, after the war, ravaged the towns of Germany and look at the beautiful work in those buildings. They've kept their history. And all I'm asking is for the university to consider keeping that part of history, not a door, not a portico, but a, that building as part of history and constructing around it. And then I think you will do the service to the public in this city to show that you have respect for the citizens of this city, just as that woman, uh, Ms. Nihus, I believe it was, spoke earlier about her education at the university. But, you know, right now, you can say what you want. I said there's no winners or losers in this. You can badger me. You can call me whatever you want. Mr. Lockwood, you tell your editors, bring it on. <laughs> You're fair, but they have the power. And you see what happens with the power. But uh, it's not about me and the unions and trying to keep jobs away. I think a compromise would create more jobs for everybody. So if you want to look at it that way, that's your prerogative. It's the same way we agree to disagree here many times. You know, we can disagree on many issues, yet we can still sit down like gentlemen and ladies and, and discuss other issues because this isn't a one issue city council we have a lot of issues on the table and a lot of finances that we have to work on and I, and I was just just to go on that I was upset at the comments that, that the cowardly lion here would not show because I'll tell you what for the last several years at budget time he secluded himself for weeks at a time working on facts and figures. It was his budgets that have brought this city back, back to where we're at. And his budgets have, are going to bring us ahead. So for anybody to make fun of Mr. Joyce because of that, I, I'm offended for Mr. Joyce. I am just stating that. But I know how hard he's worked. He may not be aggressive. He may not mouth off like I do. <laughs> More of my Irish is showing, even though I don't have the last name. <laughs> but I just want to say, I love the program. I want to see this happen. I think it's great, but I think there's got to be compromise. I think there's, you know, a few opportunities that were missed in this whole project. And I hope everybody gets together and, and satisfies everybody. And that's how I feel. And, you know, no matter what way it goes, I'll be on board with it. I give you my commitment. But I just feel that a little bit of compromise can go a long way towards everybody. And I apologize, but that's all I have to say at this point. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions? Yes. <clears throat> it seems like this week I've been uh, put on the spot 
I've been looked at as a swing vote. Um, there was a recent article in the paper yesterday, in case uh, anyone doesn't know, um, about my views in the university project. And when making an informed decision, I look at the pros and cons of things. And I see the pros and I see the cons in this, uh, in, in this whole project with the university one. It'll create jobs for the unions, the trade unions. It'll bring the license and permit revenue into the city. Those are things that we need. Some of the cons, well, we're taking down a historical building. I really didn't, I really didn't consider that much. I really didn't consider that con that much. At the, at the time I spoke to Mr. Lockwood on Tuesday. But after hearing the harb tonight, after hearing them out, and I see that there's a lot of tension in their group, and, uh, and, and I will say that it seems somewhat dysfunctional. I would personally like more time to decide and make a more informed decision and weigh the historical aspects of the building in my final decision. So I'm asking my colleagues that, I ta th that we could table this for one week. And I hope that my colleagues could respect that decision and honor that for me. So I could weigh all the pros and cons of what the speakers had to say tonight and what we've had to hear from HARB. We have a motion on the table is there a second i'll second it on the question yes we've had more than adequate time to to look at all of the the issues here uh, we've been we've been debating this for a month um, I, I i don't see any necessity in tabling this um, and i don't know what other information could be provided uh, in, in a week's time. We've heard from every source available um, on this, and I, I, I think it's time to make a decision. Uh, well, before tonight, I never heard from Peter Couple, Michael Mueller. I've s spoke to Wayne Evans about different uh, aspects dealing with real estate in the city before, but never about this project. And I didn't hear from William Lesniak, and they strongly um, opposed taking down this building. And I um, realized that Mr. Moore, uh, Ms. Rayburn, Mr. Borthwick, and Mr. Scartelli all are in favor of this. And we really truly have a split historical architectural review board and if that vote was recast that would have failed and i personally just need more time to decide the appropriate way that i feel in my heart my vote should be cast i would agree with mr mcgoff this is i feel like this is all i've talked about not only at council meetings, but <laughs> talking to members of the community every day regarding this issue, people on both sides. And obviously, Harb is divided. There's no question. Um, the, the vote came down. It was a narrow vote. Council's vote is going to be a 3-2 vote either way, it appears. But we have to make a decision. And this has been, this item has been on the agenda either formally in legislation or in the public eye and, and through the speakers for well over a month, which is much longer than we have to, to consider many other items. Um, I would like to vote now. I, we'll see what happens. I, I hope it passes, whether we pass it this week or next week. That's, that's what I want, is for, for this to pass and to get people in the city back to work. I, I think I'm, I'm blue in the face talking about this issue, but I, I support it 100%. I, I would hope we would pass it tonight. 
that's all I have to say. All those in favor of tabling signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. The legislation is tabled. Is absurd. Do you have anything else, Mr. Joyce? No, I do not. Thank you. Excuse me. There is a meeting being conducted. And just as this council respects everyone in this audience, I fully expect your reciprocation. Now, because of the public caucus and public hearing conducted prior to tonight's meeting and the length of council's agenda, I'll refrain from motions and comments at this time. Mrs. Craig, please begin. 5B, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for Quad 3 Group Incorporated Architects, 37 North Washington Street, Wilkesburg, Pennsylvania, for masonry reconstruction of the coping stones of 11 dormers and four gable ends, restoration of two chimneys, Vine Street porch area flashed, reassembled and repointed, entire building facade repointed and cleaned, removal of copper gutters and lightning protection during masonry restoration and reinstallation to original locations, removal and replacement of basement awning type windows and frames with hopper type wood and black aluminum clad windows, removal of wrought iron snow guards along roof perimeter to be sandblasted and receive new stainless steel pins and black powder coated finish and reinstallation to original location. Dick's Court East Gable Rose Window Masonry Framework Reconstruction. Removal of stained glass and reinstallation following masonry restoration. Proposed new construction is limited to a freestanding stone monument sign with bronze plaque. Existing fencing and gates to be repaired and refurbished to original condition and support piers repointed. At the Albright Memorial Library, 500 Vine Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, yeah, so we're going to hold a caucus on this item as well and drag this out for two months. Well, actually, it was Mr. McGough who requested the, ca the caucus, not myself. And secondly, isn't it notable that the majority of the people from the university, the unions, and the HARB board are no longer present to even see what happens to another HARB recommendation. No, it's doing. not. They're, they're still here, and the University of Scranton one is off the agenda since it's been tabled. So there's no reason for them to be here. I would, I, I would like to commend the HARB on this project here, specifically, I know. There's quite a few items in here that they had to review. And this is a perfect example of, you know, Renovation. what they do and renovations and, and keeping a historic structure. And I do appreciate, as I stated before, I do appreciate the hard work you've done on this and the other projects. It's a wonderful project. I'm looking forward to Thank seeing you. it when it's done because I know it badly needs it. And I might Thank add, you. I don't believe anyone on council or council's office was ever contacted by any HARB members concerning this legislation and their reservations. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6A, reading by title, file of council number 41, 2013, and ordinance, approving the transfer of a restaurant liquor license currently owned by Great Uncle Peter's LLC, 1582 Newton Ransom Boulevard, Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, 18411 Newton Township, license number r 2782 to Tara Prada LLC for use at 222 Wyoming Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 
6B, reading by title, file of council number 42, 2013, an ordinance, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept and disperse grant funds from the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, Voluntary Fire Company, and Voluntary Ambulance Services Grant awarded to the city of Scranton Fire Department. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6C, reading by title, file of council number 43, 2013, in ordinance, amending file of council number 77, 2012, an ordinance entitled General City Operating Budget 2013 by transferring funds not to exceed $75,000 from account number 01401130904299 Non-Departmental Operating Expenses Contingency to account number 01040000404250 Business Administration-Advertising to provide funding for delinquent refuse and rental registration advertising costs. You've heard reading by title of item 6C. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6C pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6D, reading by title. File of council number 44, 2013, an ordinance. Creating and establishing special city account number 02229606 entitled Paving Project Pennsylvania Gaming Act for the receipt and disbursement of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania acting through the Commonwealth Financing Authority for a local share account grant in the amount of $2,044,000 for paving the streets throughout the city of Scranton. You've heard reading by title of item 6D. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6D pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh Order 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Ordinance Number 33, 2013, amending Section 340-1, 340-8, 340-9, and 340-13A of the Code of the City of Scranton governing peddling and soliciting within the City of Scranton. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, ordinance number 34, 2013, establishing the duties, responsibilities, and qualifications of the city health inspector, providing for the payment of an annual license fee for public eating and drinking establishments within the city of Scranton, establishing annual application and renewal requirements, imposing certain duties upon the director of licensing, inspections, and permits, and the city health inspector, providing guidelines for revocation and reinstatement of licenses, and providing for imposition of penalties. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. Should I make the amendment now or after it's read? No, the amendment for 7C that we talked about last week? Yes, I, I understand. I believe we put it in um, to be made prior to the reading. Okay, it says after, but I'll do it prior. That's fine. I make a motion to amend item 7C per the following changes. In the third whereas clause, second line, after the, insert repairs and upgrading of the. Two, 
After the third whereas clause, insert whereas the UDAG re re money in the amount of $30,000 shall be used only for the repairs and upgrades required for the Connell and Novembrino swimming pools to be open for the 2013 swim season and for no other purpose. And the now therefore clause on the fourth line after money for the insert repairs and upgrades for the four also in the now therefore clause after season insert and for no other purpose do we have a second second oh, second on the question yes these are the changes that we discussed last week that attorney hughes um, drew up for counsel anyone else all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye aye opposed the ayes have it and so moved I'm going to, I believe we did it a little sideways. I still believe it's correct, though, and I am going to read 7C now, and I understand Mr. Rogan's question. So I still believe we're, we're well within form. Okay. Right, and right. then we'll just say as a method. Yes. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Ordinance Number 35, 2013, as amended, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to disperse $30,000 from the account into which repayment of Urban Development Action Grants, UDAG, are deposited, UDAG repayment account, for the Connell Park and Novembrino swimming pools to be opened in time for the 2013 swim season. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7C as amended. Second. And the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lasco? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, ordinance number 36, 2013, authorizing the acquisition by eminent domain of the parcel affected by the Rockwell Avenue Bridge Repair Project Supplemental Agreement Number 04122-C and Federal Project Number 177-X042060. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of Item 7D. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lascom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Ordinance Number 37, 2013, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a lease agreement with Northeast Inspection Consultants, NEIC, for the former supply room in the licensing inspections and permits department fourth floor city hall to be used for third party inspections as chair for the committee on rules i recommend final passage of item 70. second, second. on the question roll call please mr mcgough yes mr rogan yes mr Lascom? yes mr joyce yes mrs evans yes I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. 7F for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, ordinance number 38, 2013, sale of tax delinquent property, more commonly known as 2314 Pittston Avenue, tax map number 16714010046, Granton, Pennsylvania, to George J. Langan, Jr. 2313 Pittston Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, for the consideration of $5,000. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of Item 7F. Second. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Laskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare Item 7F legally and lawfully adopted 7g for consideration by the committee on rules for adoption ordinance number 39 2013 authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of scranton to enter into a lease agreement with the united neighborhood centers of northeastern pennsylvania known as the cabrini center 
located at 1004 Jackson Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, for a 10-year period with three successive 10-year renewal terms at tenant's option. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7G. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. 7H, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, ordinance number 40, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to enter into a lease agreement with the United Neighborhood Centers of Northeastern Pennsylvania, known as the Bellevue Center, located at 531 Emmett Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, for a 10-year period with three successive 10-year renewal terms at tenant's option. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7H. Second. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Laskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7H legally and lawfully adopted. I would like to make a motion to table item 7I. Second. On the question? All those in favor of tabling item 7I signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 7J, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 27, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a collective bargaining agreement with Local Lodge 2305 of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers in accordance with the terms and provisions of a memorandum of understanding dated May 30th, 2013, and ratified by the membership. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7J. Second. Second. On the question? Yes, I would just like to reiterate my opposition to this contract um, in part, and the main reason is I believe the city should have the option to privatize. Um, I'm not saying that's the best course of action, but the option certainly should be on the table for the new administration and the new city council to pursue. And also, I believe that's a, a good bargaining tool to end some poor practices that we see at the Department of Public Works. One of them being Public Works refuse employees going home when their roots are done, and then sometimes two to three hours later, returning to punch out. It's a practice I believe needs to end, and some of that is on management. Hopefully that will change, but I believe the city should always have the option to choose a private hauler. Is there anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Brogan? No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mr. Roskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7J legally and lawfully adopted. 7K for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 28, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept grant funds from the Department of Environmental Protection Act 101 Recycling Program Performance Grant in the amount of $34,488 for the City of Scranton Recycling Program. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7K. Second. And the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7K legally and lawfully adopted. 7L for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption. Resolution number 29, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept grant funds from the Department of Environmental Protection Act 101 Recycling Program Performance Grant in the amount of $80,283 for the City of Scranton Recycling Program. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7L. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. 
Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7L legally and lawfully adopted. 7M for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, resolution number 30, 2013, accepting a donation of three Opticom units from the Board of Amos Towers presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7M. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7M legally and lawfully adopted. 7N has been tabled. 7O for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 32, 2013, appointing Joseph Gilhooly, 952 North Webster Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18510, as an alternate number two member to the Board of Zoning Appeals for the City of Scranton. Mr. Gilhooly will replace Dominic Giorgetti, whose term expired on July 1, 2013. Mr. Guhuli's term will commence on July 2nd, 2013 and expire on July 1st, 2015. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7-0. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lascom? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> A little Mr. Joyce? Joyce. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7O legally and lawfully adopted. 7P for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 33, 2013, reappointing Charlie Spano, 718 Stafford Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as an alternate number one member to the Board of Zoning Appeals for the City of Scranton. Mr. Spano's term expired on July 1st, 2013, and his new term will commence on July 2nd, 2013, and expire on July 1st, 2015. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7P. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7P legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>